This podcast is part of the Deluxe Edition Network. To find other great shows on the network, head over to deluxeeditionnetwork.com. That's deluxeeditionnetwork.com. Hey, everybody, this is Chase from Barrel Age Flicks. Go ahead and check out our Patreon for raw, uncut footage and early access to all of our episodes. The link is in the description, and it's only $5 a month. Thanks for listening. So what do you dream? Forget it, Tina. The point is that everyone has a bad dream once in a while. It's no biggie. Yeah, next time you have one, just tell yourself that's all it is, right? Why you're having it, you know? Once you do that, you wake right up. All day long, I've been seeing that guy's weird face and hearing those fingernails. Fingernails? That's amazing you saying that. That made me remember the dream I had last night. What'd you dream? I dreamed about a guy in a dirty red and green sweater. Well, what about the fingernails? Oh, he scraped his fingernails along things. Actually, they were more like finger knives or something, something he'd made himself. But they made a horrible sound. It's like, scream. Nancy, you dreamed about the same creep I did. Nancy said they'd had a fight. It wasn't that serious. Maybe you don't think murder is serious. How can you say I don't take her death seriously? There was this, there was this guy. He had knives for fingers. One, two, Fred is coming for you. Three, four, and lock your door. Did you have any weird dreams last night? Just looked like a rock. Do you believe that people can dream about what's going to happen? No. Do you believe in the boogeyman? No. Rod killed Tina, and you know that. You better keep her home for a few days until she really gets over the shock of this. I've got something better. I'm going to get her some help. Glenn, you bastard. What did I do? I just asked you to do one thing. Just stay awake and watch me. Just wake me up if it looked like I was having a bad dream. (laughs) Please, God. This is God. What's going on, cinephiles? This is Barrel Age Flicks. I'm Lenny. Yeah, man. And this is... Hey, what's up, guys? This is Ron. Words are hard. Plus... This is Stu, and I'm a pretty fucking princess. We also have... Hey, this is Ragnar. Vagina and Tata! Also... Fuck fuck you, Chase! Yeah, fuck me. All right, hey, everybody. And special guest... Hi, it's Crystal. I make everything awkward. And Lenny. I'm not fucking here, folks. What is up, everybody? How is everybody doing? We are getting close to fucking Halloween. Fuck you, bitch. So we are going to be doing a legacy episode, and this is Stu's pick as we are doing the (laughs) Nightmare on Elm Street, the legacy. Uh, We are basically going to be uh, reviewing the first movie and also all the movies afterwards and everything else and giving our ranking. Uh, This is going to be a really fun episode. But the uh, first movie, of course, the one we're doing is um, Nightmare on Elm Street, directed by the famous Wes Craven. This was also released November 16th, 1984. Other movies that he has did, everybody knows these films. He's done directed by. Written too. Yes. Yes. Yeah, sorry. It's also created. Uh, Robert, actually, Freddy Krueger is his creation, I believe. Yes. Yeah. Wasn't it like a whole dream thing or something like that? Uh, We'll get into it. We'll yeah. get into it. Uh, other movies that he has done is Scream 1 through 4. He also did People Under the Stairs. He did Hills of Eyes, the original. He did Cursed. He also did the sequel, Hills of Eyes. Oh, Hills of Eyes 2. Yeah, part 2. He also did uh, Shocker, Vampire in Brooklyn, The Last House on the Left. Mm-hmm. You remember Deadly Blessing? Nice. Mm-hmm. Great fucking movie. But uh, this movie was made on a budget of $1.8 million and made $25 million worldwide, which is actually a huge hit. And I think this was like Cash what... Register. Ching, ching. I think this Stand is what really shit. started New Line Cinema, too, because I know they did other movies, but yep. this is what really... We'll, we'll get into that, too. Yeah. So uh, this movie stars Robert England, Heather Langenkamp, Johnny Depp, John Saxon, Amanda Wise, Lynn Shea, and Charles Flesher. 
Uh, Charles Fletcher is, you know, Roger Rabbit, if you all know that. He played the doctor. Um, other movies to come in around this same time were uh, The River, which I think was Mel Gibson and uh, the girl from Carrie. I, I forgot. Uh, Sissy Spacek or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, also did Supergirl, which I know Stu's ultimate favorite movie. <laughs> <laughs> Flaming shit. Uh, Chuck Norris's Missing in Action. Uh, we have also Night of the Comet, which is eh, it's an 08 80s movie. Uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night. Classic. That nice. is a classic right there. But uh, we're going to go ahead and go into the drink that Stu picked for us. So uh, what are we drinking, Stu? Okay, so first off, I want to say thank you to Justin, a friend and former co-worker. Uh, he actually picked this bottle up uh, from a place right sa- outside of uh, a, a, a plot, piece of property he has out in West Virginia. Um, so this is called Still Hollow Stump Town. So right. why did you pick this? Okay, uh, Actually, this was donated to us from the distillery through Justin. Uh, the reason I picked it is, honestly, one, free. I, I, I'm a cheap bastard, and yeah, free. <laughs> but also, two, it has this really great old-fashioned label on it, which I really enjoy those, and has a beautiful owl uh, as its main you know, emblem and Al you associate with nighttime. Nights, yeah, yeah. I just like the the bottle style itself. Yeah, it's, that it's, very flat looks like you know eighteen yeah. hundred saloon ass, like me, almost medicinal looking. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. And where are they located out of again? So Still Hollow is uh, based out of Harmon, West Virginia. Nice. Uh, they focus on uh, small batch. That's all they do is exclusively small batch different uh, drinks and uh, we're using uh, pure. Uh, water out of the Allegheny Mountains in West Virginia. Yeah. Um, they Their little card says, come on over to Still Hollow Spirits, a farm-to-bottle distillery located in the Allegheny Mountains of West Virginia. We specialize in traditional mountain-style whiskeys and unique bot- botanical infusions. We combine pure spring water with fresh local ingredients to craft a one-of-a-kind small-batch spirit. Now, I do have a question. Do you know what the price... I know this was no idea. donated, no so idea you know what the price, price range is. I don't have a clue. Okay. About that, what's special about this particular one is the distillery, Still Hollow, partnered with a brewery yeah. called Stumptown, also in West Virginia. Yeah. Okay. So this limited edition release is a collaboration with the award-winning Stumptown of Davis, West Virginia. They brewed their multiple hopgasm, which we then pot distilled and barrel rested to create this unique spirit in our bottle. Crystal's oh, not yeah. not digging this yeah. at all. So it's going to be a very <laughs> That's a great word. Yeah. So it's uh, going to be a, a hoppy whiskey. Is You said hopgasm? Yeah, that's what the name of the beer that they were brewing. That's well, a fucking awesome yeah. word. <laughs> Not multiple hopgasm. Interesting. Multiple hopgasm. So you don't get just one. You were all over the place. <laughs> yeah. All right. You get back to back. So, yeah. It's, Chris uh, is dreading this. <laughs> Look at Crystal's face. Small He's batch like, number six. I despise hops, yeah. so this is going to be lovely. Small batch number six, 80 proof. Like I said, I, I'm hoping... For something good, I'm I'm a big hop fan. Uh, Justin knew that I'm a big hop fan. He also knows I really enjoy whiskey, and of course, it was free too. And it was free. Yeah, he actually they they were they were contemplating whether or not they were actually going to sell that with how small of a uh, of a release they had. Um, and he was there. He's like, listen, I got a, a show that does nothing but drinks and talks movies. Um, that I think that they would be right up their alley. He's like, you know what? Yeah, here, go ahead and have this bottle. You know, on us enjoy we'll make sure to tag right. them so thank you justin thank you still hollow thank you thank you guys. stump town oh yeah all right so let's go ahead and try it um yeah <laughs> and good. the best way to drink it is neat Skull. i have no idea i have let's go Prost. cheers oh what is that fucking smell is this one of the rise um dime uh it says grain that is a really different taste yeah that is that is unique like it's very it's different. Exceptionally smooth. I do like it that. Is. No, it's very smooth. But it's it's um Oh god damn. Huh. No offense to the distillery who made this or what have you, but um I fucked up when I was little and I drank my old grandmother's old perfume and I have that <laughs> No. <laughs> no. Story time. No, yeah, no, I just <laughs> This is a whiskey, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, Crystal's not a big whiskey fan, so Or hops. None of this sounds yummy. A little vanilla. A little bit of there. A little honey. Yeah. I, I, the honey. I, yeah, honey I, I read vanilla. you on that on the honey, but the vanilla. And like, if you guys are a fan of honey, I got a little surprise for all of us later on in the show. <laughs> it's got a very sweetness to it. 
It does. It's it's very mellow. It's mild. It's warm. Yeah. It, it, it's, Slightly. Yeah. It's like it's a, got. It's, I think it's mostly the the scent that is reminiscent of a moonshine. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, grain back. Yeah, 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 a little bit, a yeah. little bit. Uh, maybe that, that real musky, but also you can get very ho- like a, like a very hoppy beer. Also at the same yeah. time, I, I'll give my review. I got it. Um, I give this one and three quarters. It's good. I would drink this again. I would buy the bottle. It is. I would. I would not mind having this on my bar. It's actually really. It's something unique and different yeah. compared to what other things that I. All the whiskeys and bourbons that I've had. It's got yeah. a, a a very mellow and like that honey taste you were talking about. I actually yeah. can taste that a little bit. It's got a little bit of sweetness to it, but it's different. I don't mind it. It's not bad. I, I I'm almost done with my glass. I mean, it's 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 really good. I I you know what? I didn't even try that. It does bring up some notes. It does. It does. You know what? No, two thumbs up. Yeah. I'm gonna give it two thumbs up. I actually like it. I actually really like it. Um, I, I'm really curious what it is on ice, though. I'd like to see it on rocks. Yeah, no, like with like the cold. The, this is all trying out now. This is all yeah, no, at two thumbs up. It's really good. I, it's got a little bit of sweetness to it. It's got a little, but not too much in it. It's smooth. It's easy to go. It's easy to drink. It's not Very. hard to drink. It's got a slight burn to it. Not like a hardcore burn, but a slight burn. I enjoy it. It's really good. I'm a, um, I'm a fan. No, what were the name of them again? Still Hollow is the name of the distillery. This particular. One is still hollow, Stump Town. Still so hollow. I, I'm going to give yeah. you credit. Good job. I, I'm, I'm a fan. Seriously, I, I don't. I mean, I think this will be different on everybody's taste buds, but really, I, I'm, I enjoy it. It's really good. Two thumbs up. How about you, Crystal? <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for it. I'm going to be nice, though. I mean, it. it be honest. I honest. Be honest. honest. That's I am one of the honest. Rules. I am being honest, right. but I'm also going to be nice. I chugged it all in two seconds and then drank some water, and like I said, it still tastes like old day per- perfume. <laughs> okay. But but I have had worse. Hashtag Malort. <laughs> so I'm going to give it a uh, 0.5. Okay. Hey, hey so Holly, you can send me another bottle. I'd, I'd gladly take it. Mm. <laughs> There's my punishment shot. So what, what is it? What is yours again? 0.5. Yeah. Wow. Chase. Oh. <laughs> you almost did. I know. I almost. I was so thinking close. about it. I was thinking about it. Chase, go ahead. <clears throat> I'm going to give this. Uh, he did look like shit. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a um, a one and a quarter. One and a quarter. <clears throat> Not a fan. Well, as no, much. actually, one point two five. No, be See, honest. Is, no. Be honest. I am being honest because this is one of those weird ones. You drink it, and it's good. Then you set it down, and you think back on it. And you're like, I don't think that was that good. And then you take another drink, and it's like, always better than you remember each time. <laughs> like sex with a fat chick. <laughs> God damn. Color and flower and look for the wet spot. Exactly. <laughs> they you know, try hard. So you just don't want to so see friends me, with her? It's a moped. <laughs> exactly. They're cool to ride. But so. nobody, you don't want no one to see you riding. Exactly. <laughs> so your review changing or is it about the same? This is a special occasion whiskey, I think. Um. So okay. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to go with, uh, with one and a half. Okay, that works. Shit. Good. Every day you get to have whiskey is a special occasion. That's right. Well, the one thing yeah. I need to... I, I really <laughs> want to find out what the price point for that bottle is because that would really tell the difference if it was worth it for the price or not. But like I said, I give it two thumbs up. But still, I'm really curious how much it cost. What would you price it at? I'd price that probably about 60 or 70. 60 or 70 bucks. I was thinking probably 70. Yeah, around that price. Uh, Ragnar, how about you? You go uh, You go next and we'll uh, end with Stu. Oh, okay. Well, sure, we'll just do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll, do it. Yeah, we'll just fucking skip the table and go across the other fucking side. Oh, that's yeah, the way we do it. We're I'm, here. I'm the just producer. Surprised. I make the fucking Oh, decisions. how producer. <laughs> oh. Oh. Do you want to fuck it? you want a chair with your name on it now? That's a good idea. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Boost your fucking ego some more? <laughs> uh, um, yeah, we're going to go with two on this There one. you go. It does... It, <laughs> We're like, are, is there is there more to this? I, see, I notice I notice there every is, single there time. Is more. I, sorry, I had to take another drink. Yeah, but every single time I've noticed that we keep taking more and more, and it, it keeps changing, and it just changes differently once you keep drinking. Better. This is an interesting one. I think it has to breathe a lot for it to really settle out. Yeah. So take a um, a sour patch kid. That's what I did. It, I did and that drink. You know, it obviously is going to change the uh, the flavor profile on it. it you're, I don't know. It's weird. Your first sip of it, you get honey and some vanilla. But after that, like you, you, roasted pecans or something like that. No, know. I don't taste that. No, I don't taste any roasted. The honey, I I agree with the honey. The yeah. vanilla, I don't Maybe taste, but the honey, I do. The... I see. It's got because it's got that sweetness of honey to it. Yeah, 
But the vanilla, it's just a. It was in the first sip. It was a very small. The smell it's, though is completely off, like totally off to what you're drinking. Like there's the, the smell is yeah, completely that, different. I yeah. think that's where my my problem is. You you get into this and it's got it's got the smell of some rock gut. It doesn't smell bad. No, it doesn't. Not even close, man. No. Yeah. Fuck no. I cannot find a fucking. It was price. harsh. No, nothing. Uh, no, I mean, I, I find they're paid and stuff like that. And they, I they can't find any. Well, you said this was a limited batch, right? But, yeah, but I mean, they they apparently have done a few more batches of it, um, and they. But of course, what's the, the good thing about small batches? Every batch is going to have its own different. Yeah, yeah, that's taste. true. Yeah, um, but no, it I I cannot find, and it looks like you can only buy it batch from. Is. Batch six. Six. Well, tell Justin if uh, yeah. if he's if they're willing to send us another bottle, I'd gladly take it on my fucking shelf. Seriously, it's, mm. I, I I really like it. I'm it's actually getting better the more I drink it. I'm almost done with my. I like, mean, batch seven is going to taste different than this one. Yeah, five tastes guarantee you taste different than this one. Yeah. No, this is really you good. know so. But like I said, that fucking honey taste, like you said about the honey, I can definitely taste that like i could definitely taste that sweetness so it's very but it's not it's not hardcore sweet it's like no it's not mellow no yes and i think that's the hops yeah the uh the, yeah what is it the hopgasm hop- multiple hopgasm the multiple hopgasms yeah that you, you receive from uh drinking this load after load yeah <laughs> so you give it two <laughs> yeah all right yeah. Stu. we'll go ahead and end with you what is uh your two hopgasms i am absolutely a two thumbs up on this i am i was worried i'm always worried you're being uh, honest, right? Yes. No, I, yeah. I was absolutely worried. I'm always worried when we, when somebody gives us a bottle because I, I, I feel the need to try to, you know, give them extra points. But Be no, nice this is about it. Yeah, this is legit. I, it, the the smoothness and the mellowness is what's selling it so hard for me. I want to try it. Like yeah. I said, I want to try it on the uh, on ice. Yeah. I want to try it on the rocks. Do you mind if I pour some on the rocks? Burn. I don't care. Not yeah. even burn, but no. a little. A little heat. It's exactly. just a little bit just of warmth. A, I wouldn't yeah. even so, yes. can't yes. call it It's really it so warm. mild across the board. Like when when you said that it may be special occasion, I hundred percent disagree. This is this could be an everyday every drink evening for me. with the fire. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, especially you know winter time. You know, like uh, yep. sitting around. See, and that, that's that the other thing. Delicious. I think that is your normal mm. theme of every single time that, we have a whiskey or bourbon a, sitting at a fire. That's what have, it should be. That's exactly. No, that's true. Yeah. No, no. no, no because you dip, have, would you have a would you dip a cigar in this? The, yes. Yes. Yeah. No, because that, that would make a little bit of a taste to it. Whether yeah. you dip a cigar, especially with that little sweetness to it, it had uh, it, it had its own unique profile. Yeah. It. Uh, so we've had drinks on here where it just felt. Flat, you know, the, it's like all right. It it, ha- it doesn't have its own taste. It doesn't yeah. have its own. Uniqueness. I think I have to See, revisit. The thing is, I finished my glass, and I just feel that nice yes. warmth right now. And I just feel very chill, and I'm relaxed. Like I want more. Yeah, <laughs> fucking love it. It's so good. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to re- revisit my review. Um, it really does change its entire profile as you drink, and I'm more than halfway through what I had. <clears throat> um. I got to give it at least a 1.75, maybe even a full two. Right off the bat, I think the nose got me, th- threw me off a little bit because it kind of hit me I scent-wise the- like a moonshine does. Yeah, and I think that comes from the fact that, you know, you're using a, a, the grain back uh, for yeah. the distil- distillation process. And while I'm a big fan of moonshine... Yeah. I hate the smell of moonshine. See, I'm going to let mine's air out a little bit, and then I'm going to put some whiskey rocks in it and yeah. try it cold and see what that does, does to it. As going through this, I got to raise my review and say that he's absolutely right. This isn't a special occasion whiskey. This is what I want every night when I come home, set up the fireplace, and just relax. And watch some Nightmare on Elm Street. I'd be happy with that. Yeah, fuck it up. I would absolutely be happy I, I with figured that. you would be. You'll probably finish that bottle in one night. I'm very well good. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing you. And it's a beautiful fucking bottle. Nice and simple. Yep. You can tell this place is, you know, the fact that they're not, you're not seeing it at the, the liquor stores and stuff like that. They're only selling it straight from the distillery. Yeah. Uh, uh, farm to. Uh, farm to distillation process. You know they keep everything as local and uh, house source as they can. Yep, they're they're putting forth the work, they're putting forth the effort, uh, and taking their time to develop their craft. And I appreciate that. Uh, always worried about these these small places that pop up. You know, I don't know if they're just trying to make a buck real quick and mm-hmm. stuff like that because uh, 
microbreweries, micro uh, distilleries, and stuff like that have become a huge, huge, huge thing in the past decade, decade and a half. Yeah. Uh, so people just trying to cash in, but this is people that you can tell they they take pride in their work, yeah. and they develop they deliver an excellent product. Yeah, no, so hollow. Uh, kudos to you guys. You guys did a great job with this one. Absolutely. I look forward to getting more of this stuff. Seriously, that you guys rock. This is this is badass and uh, really good, relaxing whiskey. I, yeah. I enjoy Feel it. Feel free so. to uh, send us a bottle. Send, send us a us, case. Send <laughs> us a couple and of Justin, more. I might be coming out to your your patch in order just to visit the place to pick up other bottles of different. Yeah, varieties. mark one down for me because I want one All on right. my fucking bar. I am. I am <laughs> one, very yeah. very happy with this. I was. Very, I'm very surprised. And pleasantly so. Uh, great job, Still Hollow. Uh, obviously, great job, Stumptown, with, with the mash they provided to Still Hollow uh, and developing this this flavor profile. I'm very happy. All right, guys. Well, that is the uh, end of our first segment, so we will be right back. What's up, guys? Check out this trailer for the podcast of the month in the Deluxe Edition Network. I'm Kyle Curtis. Let you like to talk about movies? So do I. I'm on YouTube where I do interviews, reviews, rankings, live streams, unboxings, and much more. You can also catch me on Facebook or Twitter at Return of the Living Flet. I have huge passion for what I do. I love talking about horror. I love talking about movies in general. And with that being said, keep on streaming. All right, oh, guys, we are Billy. back with our show as we are talking about Billy and oh, yes and stuff like that. So That is correct, young man. Oh, yeah. Yours just sounds weird. Hi. <laughs> is, is that what? It's to make you uncomfortable, that's all. Is that your pegging sound? You're doing a good job at it. I, I don't think I would know. Oh. oh. Pretty, pretty sure I'm un, unfamiliar with the. Oh, I was just asking. Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? I'm, I'm rather sure, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think you would know. <laughs> Tell Chris it gets you drunk. <laughs> Probably wake up in the middle of the night with a fucking ache in your ass. <laughs> That's why, why you're sore in the Why does my asshole hurt? Because <laughs> I had corn. Nothing. All right, so we're going to get back to our movie. Stu, you go ahead and uh, lead us off. I have been so looking forward to this episode since we started this fucking podcast. Um, it was previously claimed... By he who should not be named. Harry Potter. Yes, exactly. Harry Potter. The uh, boy who lived. <laughs> yes. Come to uh, die. And out of kindness, I went ahead and bowed. You know, like, go ahead. You can have it. But then when the parting of the ways happened, I'm like, it's fucking mine. It's mine, you bitches. Uh, Freddy Krueger has always been my number one uh, horror movie villain. Yeah, no, no. Always. The funny, the funny thing is that I come to this fucking podcast wearing a Jason Voorhees shirt because I'm sorry, that's, that's my boy right that's there. That's fine. Yeah, you, know, you have your your fucking zombie retard. It's fine. And then you have, <laughs> hey, and then you have. He's Crystal. got better kills than Freddy. Then he has no Crystal, personality. Who shows up? Who needs a personality? A fucking iconic goddamn <laughs> fuck you, Ragnar. <laughs> what the fuck? He uh, likes Jason because Jason never talks. That's like his so, hero. He never so yeah, Michael Myers. Words. So he never fucks up words. We, we, we shall see. No, we, it's because words are hard. That's we why shall he's see. His hero. We're saying Jason you like because he never fucks up words. Eh, that's true. That's who he aspires to be. Yes. Huh? I mean, I wish I could be like that. Mongoloid. Kimmy yes. Schmidt. He, he wrote the short bus, I'm sure, too. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I was going to bring that fucking shit up. I do. I do. No, I, 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 I've known Stu for almost like over 10 years or oh, longer 15. than that. It's shit. Yeah, God damn, 15, it has been 16 years now. Yeah, and the thing is, all he's ever talked about is Freddy. Freddy's always been his number one favorite, so yeah. I, I can. He has a fucking totally goddamn that. personality that sells it. Jason is awesome. Michael Myers is awesome. And then you have fucking Freddy goddamn Krueger. You know, come on the scene, and I know you like a pedophile. He wasn't a pedophile in the original. No, they in the original one, they never once said he he touched the kids. Only he was a child murderer, yep. and that he especially liked little girls. Yes, all right, mm. but he was a child murderer. That's all they said. That's all they you know put on film, and that's what you go with is what they put on film. Yeah, not until the fucking reboot. Do they decide, no, he ain't a child murderer. He's a fucking kid toucher. Yeah. yeah. All right. Which is worse in a fucked up way. Oh, absolutely. But, I mean, he, he didn't. 
in the remake, he didn't kill those fucking kids. He just fucking touched them. Yeah. All right. So molestation is worse than murder. Yeah. It's just, yeah. It's, it's weird how Especially that, when you it, top it I off agree. with murder. Yeah. I agree, <laughs> but... It's weird because that, it traumatizes that, that, that kid. For, that that kid is traumatized for the rest of his so life. So well, think to be dead. Well, they're not having to deal with. They're not having anymore. to. De- yeah, they're, they're, I, I'm. Uh, I'm saying with- spicy motor. There, I mean. It's oh, kinda... wait, when you just oh, oh, you oh that name. was definitely a oh. boner of the spicy oh, variety. Why? Well, thank you so much. We God, Ben. I don't know why I'm not saying your name right. It's because you haven't been on the fucking show in a while, you ass. He was. What the fuck? He was at Queen of the Damned. <sighs> All right. Well, I guess I'll go ahead and sp- spin the wheel. How quickly we fucking forget. <laughs> uh, Malort Mixer. Ooh. Hot Glock by BAC. Okay. okay. That's your call. Oh, that's you. That is. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> I love that little fucking demon laugh. I love it. <laughs> the giggle is adorable. Yes. <laughs> it really is. Chase, you want to do the uh, Malort Mixer? I do, but I think I just octize on something I want to mix it with. Uh-oh. Good, do it. Yes. <laughs> All right, so we will be right back. All right, so uh, Crystal from our BAC, since so she's the only one here, uh, picked a Malort mixed with uh, Jose Cuervero Margaritas. Cuervero? Cuervero, you illiterate fuck. Whatever. Well, how have you not even heard it enough that your brain is like, no, that ain't right. Let me stop. There's this. a whole song. Yeah. <laughs> This is going to be weird. So what about Malort? We are fresh up. I just had a delivery. uh, Thanks to my pops, fresh out of Florida. Yeah, we have an uncomfortably full wall. uh, It's going to last a fucking weekend. (laughs) We have eight (laughs) more bottles of delicious, high-quality Jepson's Malort. I am dreading this. Yes, (laughs) You should. Oh, wow. Believe me, Sammy and Snow are going to be very excited. Dude, that thing got thick. Oh, boy, she's thick. Do it. Do it. Oh, now do it's it. separating. Fucking do it! Bottoms up. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, oh, God. Oh, that is a reaction. <laughs> oh, that is a Oh, re- yes! It's job, like watermelon Crystal. with the Lord. It's fucking horrible. Great job, Crystal! Yes! Oh, fuck me. That's a winner! <laughs> Oh, yeah. It was, <laughs> it was a panic trying to search for a drink for me. Oh, amazing. That fucking sucked. <laughs> Wonderful. No. It's like fucking watermelon. And then Malort's, that Malort back. Oh. <laughs> amazing. Oh, my fucking eyes are shorts. watering up. That Good fucking job. shit sucks. Oh, God. Good job. You suck. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Crystal. <laughs> Oh, God. Mm. So what's his name? <laughs> Chase. Oh, <laughs> good job. So and you've he probably learned, hits puberty. <laughs> you've learned from your mistakes. Oh, man. Th- thanks to negative reinforcement. I think it's safe to say that uh, we finally found something, though. Yes. Great job. Oh, it's still going, too. It's fucking hurting me. <laughs> I don't like that shit. Oh, wow. Oh, good job, shit. Crystal. Good job. So, would you say that's the worst you've had? Yes. <laughs> yes. It's he different. No, bullshit. <laughs> bullshit. Will you say... Just by your fucking with reaction. With honesty. Shall with honesty. It's, um... Is it's that bad. the worst? Are you sweating? He's sweating. <laughs> <laughs> it's like making... It's making me sick. <laughs> so, are you in... Uh, will you say, honestly, this is the worst? Yes. Get the trash can. As you almost vomit. Get the trash can. Mm. I'm fine. No, it's it's right next to you. I'm fucking sweating, dude. I don't know why I don't like it. Okay. It's watermelon. No. It's like watermelon. Vote. I call for a vote. Oh, shit. Should Ron no. new punishment <laughs> shot be Malort with Jose Cuervo watermelon margarita mixer? Aye. 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 The eyes have it. It's a reaction. Yes. <laughs> And Ron, it oh yeah, carries. the visceral reaction is real right now. I, I, I still taste awesome. the watermelon with the malort, and it's still like it's not leaving. No, it's not. It's going not leaving. leaving. So that <laughs> is your new punishment shot. Oh God, no. Uh, yes, awesome. yes. Oh. 
Get, get, talk, I love go, your go, suffering. Go back to the I fucking movie. Suffering. Go back to the fucking movie. Okay. So you know what was cool about Freddy, though? If When you look at... Freddy can go fuck himself. <laughs> Why are you so angry? Jeez. Because this fucking sucks. That's bad. I, I don't know what it is about... Did that help? <laughs> did it didn't look like it helped. No, it did not. It didn't make it any better. Do you want me to get you some water? No, I'm fine. <laughs> you, it's, was, I still have that watermelon taste in my mouth. Would you like some Baileys? <laughs> Gollum? <laughs> Please stay precious for everybody at home. Russell. There you go. See? <laughs> All right, get back to the... F- All right. So, Nightmare on Elm Street, 1984. Oh, written and directed by... The late great Wes Craven. <sighs> yeah, honestly, uh, I've always been a huge, huge fan of of Wes Craven. So creative, so unique and original, and able to push the boundaries of what was normal at the time. And saying, you know, I'll take this idea and I'm going to spin it on its fucking head. I, I, it, it, you can ask Ron when when Wes passed away. I was oh you were I you was were legit hurt. I you was, were you were very yeah. upset. I remember when you yeah. talked about it and how upset you were. I mean, yeah. I, I'd be the same way for Wes for, for uh, Martin Scorsese. Yeah, you know, so. uh, and it's one of those ones that he he left an indelible mark in my my psyche. It won't go away. In the whole horror community. Yeah, yeah. The, um, the fucking taste won't go away. So it's really pissing me off. He he came up with this Isn't idea. Things? After reading a news article uh, about a handful of Asian immigrants that were having nightmares uh, to the point that they were refusing to go to sleep and nobody could figure out what's going on. And then at least one of them died, you know, from, you know, you know, from a nightmare. It's the best they they could figure out. Really? Uh, Yes. They were swearing that they were, you know, they couldn't go to sleep, couldn't go to sleep. They actually found. Uh, legit, you know, and one of them, you know, after they passed away, they found them hiding a coffee maker the same way that was uh, put in the movie, oh. uh, you know, in their room yeah. um, in order to try to continue to stay awake. They were uh, in the hospital. They were uh, uh, hiding away the, the, the sedatives, you know, that they were being given uh, in order to try to continue to stay awake. They were so afraid of sleep. And he thought, man, that's that's really fucking that's a f- scary ass fucking goddamn idea. We all have to sleep. There's nothing we can fucking do. We have to sleep. So he was inspired by that idea, and then he expanded upon it, by based off of uh, one as an interaction he had when he was a child. He looked out of his apartment window and he saw this old man, drunk motherfucker, you know, town drunk, you know, uh, walking down the street in the middle of the night, and he looked out the window, and the guy just turned and just stared and locked. Locked eyes with him, you know. Huh. You know when with Craven was a kid, he's like, "Oh my fucking god!" <laughs> well, <laughs> like, did he have a he, green he, and red sweater? Uh, no, he didn't. No, uh, he, oh, okay. I'll, I'll get into why he chose green and red here in a second. Um, but he locked eyes with him, and Wes, of course, you know, ducked under the windowsill, you know, like any fucking kid will. Like, what the fuck's going on? And then after waiting, what he thought was an appropriate amount of time, okay, this guy had to have fucking you know moved on. He peeked back out. The dude still sits there, staring at him dead in the eyes. He pokes his head forward like, I know, I know you're watching me. And then he starts uh, walking inside of his apartment, going into the lower floor because yeah. he was on an upper floor. Yeah. And, you know, and Wes told his older brother at the time what was going on. His older brother went out there with a fucking baseball bat ready to fucking brain this motherfucker. <laughs> Dude was nowhere to be found. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, but that, that stuck with him so goddamn much. Just this, this strange, you know, older man, you know, fucking with, literally just fucking with a kid. Yeah. For no goddamn reason, just fucking with a kid. Yeah. Um, Drunk and bored. Yeah. So he, he merged those ideas. Adds up to me. Yeah. Then he heard the song Dreamweaver. <laughs> Wait, so you, you, you fuck with little kids when you're drunk and bored? Wait a minute, Dreamweaver? Yeah. No, just fuck with people, but okay. Oh, okay. Dream that's where you want to go? Weaver. Well, you said that sounds like me. <laughs> all right. No, I said and that, that sounds fair to me. Thinking about, oh, all right, what if there was somebody no, who could actually control <laughs> your dreams? Yeah. You know, actually weave these dreams. So he put all these together, and he came up with Freddy Krueger, which he named after a childhood bully of his. I, I remember, I know, so I actually, I remember yes. seeing that in the documentary, and the thing is, is that um, what was creative about this is that this was the first, like, 
every killing movie, I mean, every like a horror movie of the 70s and 80s, you know, it's always somebody that's been real life. But the fact that this was the first ever where it's somebody that actually kills you in your fucking dreams. Exactly. So this was very, you don't, you you can't just outrun. Yeah. You know, this, this killer, you cannot, you're in his fucking world. Yes. And he has his powers. You can't do shit. It's brutal. But think of it though. You can't do anything in the real world. Yeah. Right. You can't manifest anything. Right. But in your dreams, you can. You have the ability to manifest anything that you want. If you're a lucid dreamer, yes. Yeah, if yeah. you if you realize it is a dream. Well, a lot of people, when they realize they're dreaming, they wake up. Yep. Or they lose the ability to do what they were doing in their dreams. Exactly. Yeah, yeah but you also don't always don't remember your dreams. That's no. another thing. No. So, but uh, and they quick did, tip, though. Quick tip, if you are trying to lucid dream and you feel yourself coming out of it while you're in the dream, put your arms out like a T-pose, and twirl, twirl around a few times. Whee! It, it actually helps you keep in the Yeah, but well, you're going to be so much in that dream that you're not going to remember to do that shit. So If you're starting to lucid dream, then you are aware that you're in a dream. Oh, okay. <laughs> so he named it after a childhood bully, bully literally named Fred Krueger. You know, uh, so this isn't actually even the first time he named a character after this childhood bully. And really? yes, in Last House on the Left, yep. the main villain was Krug. That's right. Yes. So, how right. much of an impact, how much of a little fucking asshole was that fucking bully that it <laughs> fucking scarred Wes so goddamn bad? He's like, you know what? No, I'm going to make you a fucking rapist, and I'm going to make you a child killer. Yeah, but you know, you know, the thing you have to think about <laughs> well, is... We can find did, him did, on did LinkedIn that, now. Did that bully ever contact Wes Craven like 10 years later <laughs> that I ever saw? Why did you make a movie about me? <laughs> Not that I ever saw. See, that, that's, that's one thing I'm always curious about, but I guess that, you know, it could have been like somebody that went down the shit and didn't you know probably died or something like that but you know context is wait a minute there's a movie wait a minute i went to school with him why is there a movie named after me yep <laughs> i mean you gotta think about no, that I, 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 and that's we don't know that was that i the asshole died. oh my god i was the asshole <laughs> <laughs> so he comes up with this you know this this killer um and he, it's at the tail end of the first you know real big slasher you know uh you know renaissance yeah uh, and horror movies, uh, slasher horror movies, are starting to die out as far as being moneymaker. Studios are starting to be like, eh, don't really want to name him. But he was a late bloomer because yeah. uh, Friday the 13th, Michael Myers, it was like 70s, yeah. early 80s. Yeah. And, and audiences were starting to get burned out. Yeah. Uh, well, and, this was a different take. Yeah. So uh, he came up with this in order to uh, help finance different ideas and stuff like that because he didn't want to be pigeonholed as a, just a horror movie you know, director. That's not what he wanted. But so he came up with this idea uh, in order to help finance, you know, other other ideas that he yeah. may have had. He came up with the character, uh, you know, uh, that, that started thinking about design. Well, you know, uh, we I, I don't want just a masked killer, but also don't want just a normal dude. So that's where he came up with the idea of, you know, being burned and stuff like that. So he could still have, you know, facial features and have, you know, personality being, you know, shown, but also still not look like the normal guy. Yeah. Uh, he came up with a red and green sweater based off some random fucking article he read in like National Geographic or whatever. Supposedly, red and green are the hardest on the eyeballs when they're next to each other. You know, uh, it, it's the most visually striking. You know, your eyes don't like to see that, which is weird because those are Christmas colors. Yeah, they are. Uh, but that's what uh, some random article that he, you know, scientific article that he read. He's like, all right, I'll incorporate that and make it, you know, hard to fucking look at. So yeah, yeah, but I would, they're, they're, ima- I would always imagine it would be chartreuse and black. Okay. Yeah, but the thing is, the thing I noticed chartreuse, about this movie, huh? the thing I noticed okay, about this movie you. is the the hat. Good though. for you, chartreuse. Way to bring up chartreuse. But I have a question about the hat. <laughs> it's a fishing lure color. Fuck off. Okay. Okay. The, Once again, we go back to the pegging. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I have a question about the uh, the. Uh, what did ha- you say? I said you're a fucking dick. Oh, okay. I thought Boy, you said fuck you. Stu's always else. a fucking dick. Right. But the, the fucking hat, though. The the hat is the only thing I have a question about because in the other movies it turns more into like a like a regular fedora. Yeah. But in the first movie and second movie, just some old beat up. Fucking it, it looked a whole lot yeah. different than it did in the uh, future movies. Well, all, all he, he 
uh, always evolved as you know, and you know, all the characters became sharper and you know, different as the makeup was different in almost they, every single yeah, different they movie. They absolutely yeah. were. They absolutely were, and as more money being put behind it and uh, different design ideas and and huge, huge, huge practical effect believer. Well, no, but yeah, the thing but is, it didn't I thought work though. Uh, no, I think it worked in the first movie because I thought he actually looked more creepier in the first one than all the other ones. The other ones he looked more comical. No. But that, with his makeup, he actually looked a little bit more like. But that's also they were developing his own personality. He he yeah. wanted to because uh, also Robert England fucking goddamn hated the fucking makeup. He fucking hated their stories of as soon as the, the fucking you know the shooting for the day is done, him walking through tearing off the fucking latex and just throwing it as he's walking and some random schmuck is behind him collecting the fucking pieces. Yeah, like, uh, he's like, I'm fucking done! Get me out of this shit! To Fuck be this. fair, it was, you know... To be fair. <laughs> to be fair. To be fair. It was 48 hours of work yeah. to get in and out of that shit in the first place, yeah. so I would have fucking hated and right off of that. Yeah. Crystal, Crystal, you have a you have a love, like, uh, like a infatuation with his looks, right? You think that he's a sexy-looking dude. A lustful <laughs> interest. Lustful. There we go. I will put it to you this way. I am one of the lucky human beings that still is able to remember my dreams practically every night when I wake up. And I thank you very much, Stu, for forcing me to watch these for every night for the You're past welcome. seven days. Cause You're welcome. She was getting turned on. I, I, look, <laughs> I first met these Completion. guys at a Halloween party, and I was introduced to one of the human beings that they know because they were dressed as Freddy. But I was walking out of a room and I shut the door and there's Freddy. And instead of screaming, my reaction is, ah, I love you. <laughs> I, I remember, yeah, I, I remember, remember that. that quite well. Yeah, I remember that. You were, <laughs> but also you were so shy and such a wallflower when that was one of the first times you were being introduced to the group and you were so in your shell. And I'm so glad you've come out of your shell more and more and more. Uh, but it, it was just so funny to see this little, little timid thing. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. But it was awesome. But yeah, so he came up with, you know, the the, the, the sweater. He came up with the burn looks. He came up with the, the whole idea. And uh, then he come up with, all right, every killer's got to have a weapon. Right. And I, I, you know, an immediately recognizable weapon. Um, and at the time, most of them were single blade, you know, weapons. You had Jason. Jason was an uh, opportunity killer. Axe, but, machete. Yeah, um, but machete is the first thing you think about when you think about Jason. Yeah. You think about the fucking, uh, uh, the, the, the butcher knife. That's Michael know, Myers. Michael yeah. Myers. Uh, he's like, all right, so what else? What else? What else? And then he looked at his fucking cat that he had at the time and with the fucking claw. And he's like, how primordial the fear of claws are uh just from you know all the way back in caveman days you know saber tooth mm -hmm. fucking tigers and shit like that so he called up uh the uh special effects designer at the time he's like listen i want fucking goddamn claws i want fucking claws all right and so came up with the fucking the four blades on the end of a fucking black leather glove yes no and i think that's a really re yes. like a really the weapon, because it's very, it's not like, you know, perfect and pristine. It's at pristine. It's like a, like an old, like work yes. glove with the, um, rusty, like knives. I mean, they're fucking, it it's a great the character. So damn. And it's only on one well, hand too. That's yes. the only thing. He only needs it on one hand and it, it looks great. When you see him in the pictures, you see him in the poster, you see that one, him just hunching down with his fucking, uh, uh, claws going down yes. and the other hand just normal it's just it, it it's iconic it looks great and it's wonderful because i think i think freddie had what eight minutes of screen time all together in the first nightmare on elm street yeah uh, roughly it's another, it's another beetlejuice yeah and immediately became iconic mm -hmm. or iconic just from that little bit it just hit the 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 the, the, the psyche of uh, the culture at the time yeah oh, the so first moment you see him though is really stupid it is but also freaky as shit it's i don't think so i don't think it's freaky i think it was pointless to do it that way if if you saw that happen in a fucking dark alley what are you going to be like what all right are you like oh that's stupid you're like what the fuck is oh, no, this no oh, no i'm gonna be looking i'll be like what the fuck <laughs> exactly you know but i mean i don't think i don't i don't know I don't think him having fucking stretch Armstrong arms 
in the alleyway. It's fucking serves, hilarious, serves though. <laughs> it was. It was, it was Ryder was talking to me about this. Do you know how they like, shot? That? I don't think it served any fucking purpose, though. Except just to show the the flexibility of yeah, his character yeah, in the, the dream the, world. The, uh, that uh, literally he does not have yeah, literally. Yeah. Yeah. he yeah. does not have to follow <laughs> the rules of well, of normal. Oh, I know. They, I'm not, they, I'm not they did it. Got to follow the Fuck rules. They did it in Freddy vs. Jason also yeah. when he was trying to get the uh, um, uh, the uh, Destiny's Child's chick and our, or. Or no, no, the dude, the, the guy, and he said that he didn't have his power yet because he had Jason, and you just see his arm stretch out. Yeah. So they did more. It, oh, it looked more. That was more like yeah. a shadow. Yeah. Bro. yeah, but still, but he was able yeah. to extend his claw. But out. that's all it was. Oh, was yeah, the yeah. show. He does not follow the same rules that we we come to expect of these killers. No, well, well see, uh, that's the thing because it's not just him. He uses his environment, his yes. world. It's his world, so he yeah. can do so much with it. Like, he'll pop out right here, and then the, she's running around, turning around and going the other way, and then he's in that place. Yes. So he, he's able to, you know, uh, manipulate her and basically, or manipulate the uh, the uh, villain, or, I mean, not the uh, the character, and basically go in different places and do things that they wouldn't expect. Yeah. Because so. his goal isn't just to kill. His goal Perfect. is to feed off of your fear. All right, the more That's how he gets his power. Ride, the yeah. stronger he feels. Well, he's one of the only ones that actually has charisma. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Out of all yeah. of exactly. the killers, all the slasher flicks. Exactly. He's the only one that actually has some I mean, sort of charisma. I mean, when you think about the big 3 of of horror movie, you know, killers. You think about Jason, yeah. of course. You think about Michael Myers, mm -hmm. of course. And then you think about Freddy fucking Krueger. Yeah. And then you uh, got you got little small you got Chucky, Texas, Texas, you got Texas, uh, uh, leather face, mask or leather face. Yep. But when you think about the big three, no, that's that's it, it really. I think it's the big two. It's it's uh, Mike. Well, no, Michael no, Myers would be no, the big would three. Be, no, I would say it's a big three. I would absolutely argue uh, it's the big three. It's the holy trinity. But of, would you would you pay to see uh, Michael Myers uh, versus right. Freddy versus Fuck Jason? Yeah. Dear <laughs> resident yes. slasher oh, whore, awesome. what do you think? God, could you be any more mousy? What was that? I invited you on because I, f I knew your love for this character. I, I wanted excitement, ex you know, joy. I am, but I'm also trying to share this with a quiet one over here that is like... Harsh. I'm saying quiet so you can talk. <laughs> <laughs> well, if that's the fucking case, go sit on the sofa. Oh, damn. <laughs> I didn't mean it. <laughs> and Chase has just been kicked off the show by Crystal. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That is not at all what I meant to well, do. Well, way to fucking go, Crystal. <laughs> no, spotlight's yours? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what would you think, you know, when, when you're thinking horror icons, do you think, you know, top three, top five, top ten? What, what do you think? My mind immediately goes to Freddie, Jason, and Michael. Exactly. I love you. Thank you. Jason is... No, it is. Yeah, no, I'm not I, I, I agree. Away from it. Yeah, no, they, I, I appreciate that yeah. because that that's my boy. Jason yeah. is my boy. I I, I appreciate Freddie, but Jason is my boy. But Freddie does have a what what I, what's different about it is Michael Myers and Jason are sort of similar because they're both mute characters. Mm -hmm. Freddie's got more of the Life. mind fucks, the the, the mm -hmm. mind trickery. You know, he he actually makes his victims like, oh shit, what the fuck am I going to do? Like he he really you know he doesn't chase them. He fucking torments them. Yes. He really is a cat. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Plays with this food. No. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so you know, here comes this idea. Um, multiple, multiple studios turned him down. Wes Craven turned him down. Said no, no, no. One studio said yes. Disney. <laughs> what? No shit. Yes. Please, I wish Freddie would have been a princess. Disney <laughs> said yes, but. You got to severely, severely, severely tone everything fucking down. Wow. We just want a campy little Halloween movie to give to fucking kids. Blah, yeah. blah, 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 blah. And Wes Craven, God rest his soul. He was like, uh, no, yeah. <laughs> absolutely not. Yeah. I, no I can't, way. I can't I see that. He turned down a guaranteed payday, you know, from Disney motherfucking goddamn studios yep. to because he thought that was so ridiculous ridiculous of an idea well see the thing about new line cinema is new line cinema is actually really known for well for horror films and now, they, they even bought they bought the jason for he yeah, they bought yeah, just the rights uh, yeah just, just for jason yes. not not friday the 13th but no they bought it just to have freddie versus jason that's it that's the only reason they and then it went through development it. hell and it took like fucking yes. 10 years to yes. do but still we'll get to that i know we'll i know I'm, I'm excited about I that know, one i know you are <laughs> jason's a one but then he goes to he, he, he eventually makes it the way to New Line. New Line Cinema, uh, up until this point, they'd only been really a distribution house. That's yeah. all they've really yeah. done, distribute uh, other films. They had in-house made 
a couple of films that they'll come back and say, yeah, we made our money back, but they weren't really fucking anything. Yeah. And so like that. And they were basically on their last legs. You know, they were getting close to folding and so like financially, you know, they just really couldn't do it. Then Wes Craven, you know, presents this and they're like, you know what? This seems like, you know, an easy way to make some money. We'll yeah. go ahead and, you know, cash on ourselves. Horror money, uh, horror movies are just easy fucking, you know, paychecks, especially at that time. Super low investment, super high return. Yeah. All right. People just want to go out there, have fun. Everybody loves a horror yeah. movie. And yeah. Robert Shea, Bob Shea, whatever he wants to be called. Who's uh, actually cameoed in most of the movies. Yes, he has. Yeah. Um, he was the, uh, you know, the, 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 the truck driver, the doctor. Uh, he was something else. He, he was the one in charge of New Line Cinemas. He greenlit it, and he's like, "All right, let's go ahead and do it, and we'll go ahead and fucking make it ourselves." Yeah. All right, not just distribute it. We will make it ourselves. All right, and but here's the money we have to work with. <laughs> this is literally all the money we have to work with. And even then, the 1.8 million you came with, that's not even what they had at the beginning. As they're shooting this film, uh, there was a few weeks there where nobody got paid. Because mm-hmm. there was no money in the fucking call for it. Sounds like trauma. Yep. They had to reach out <laughs> to some European investors in order to scrounge up the rest of the fucking funds. But you, you know what I mean by sounds yes. like trauma. Because yes. Lloyd Coppin doesn't pay shit. He no. pays like $100 for an actor to do a role. Yeah. I mean, seriously. So, but they, they went ahead and did that. And then this becomes a massive fucking juggernaut. A massive financial success. Makes 25 times its fucking budget. And just in theatrical, uh, which is huge immediate fucking green light immediate and Wes Craven did not picture this as being a a multiple film thing he pictured a nice happy ending everybody you know does you're not even sure if it was real Nancy wakes up you know at the end happiness and stuff like that the mom's there not knowing her friends are there was it just a dream or what? Didn't he want it to fade out to the girls with the jump rope? Yes. Well, he always wanted that. He always wanted that. Um, but it, he it leaves that kind of ambiguous feeling like, is this real or was it you know not real? You know, But uh, he wanted a quote-unquote happy ending. Bob Shea came along saying, listen, no, I insist on at least one last, you know, gotcha. All right. I want the possibility of sequels. I want that to be a possibility. And one so they, sh- one. Yeah, they shot four different fucking endings and they kind of made them a hybrid together. For the, for the original Nightmare on Elm Street? Yeah. What were, oh, the four yeah. Different, what were the four different endings? So you see Nancy, you are walking out, getting into the uh, um, uh, convertible with all of her friends that were dead but now are alive. You see her mom is waving. That was the happy ending. Uh, no, it, well, oh, the happy ending. Okay, because uh, I remember her, she, her mother got pulled through the window. That, that, okay, that was another ending that they shot. Yeah. Uh, another ending was they were all getting in the vertible and then all of a sudden they look and Freddie's the one driving. Yeah. Uh, another ending was I see that one, the though. convertible, you know, fucking, you know, the, the, the green and red stripe comes yeah. up and fucking does it, you know? So they shot these different endings and they kind of just merged them all together into one ending and stuff like that <laughs> at the last minute. Uh, but all the time he always wanted the, the, the camera to pan onto the girls in white doing the jump rope. Uh, in order to end on that. And so that's what he did. He went ahead and, and you know, cataloged to, uh, you know, Bob Shea. He's like, all right, you're the one fucking paying me. Fine. If that's what you want. That's what you get. I, I got a question. <laughs> did Robert Ingl- or, or did uh, um, Wes Craven come up with the whole poem? The one, two, Freddy's come for you? I believe so. I, I do. I was just curious. So. I, I didn't know yeah, if that was based on uh, one, two, buckle my shoe. Well, all yeah. I did was change the fucking words and slow it the fuck down. That's yeah. all I did. And make it, make it creepy. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he did. Well, they did a good job with it. A very, fucking very good job. Well, you you're talking about the whole different endings thing. The miscommunication almost fucked that completely yes. up. Yes, it did. You're right. Go ahead. Like, the, well, at, they were um, showing it. Was it to Paramount or somebody else? There, there was a different company they were trying to sell it to to get yeah. more money. Right. Well, Paramount owned the rights to Friday the 13th, so... I, I, it might be. I just can't remember off the top of my head who they were showing it to. But they're in the middle of showing the movie, and the guy who owns the one they were currently doing it for texted the guy who's showing it. It's like, hey, so what ending do you have in? This one? But that's not the one I wanted. I wanted this ending. Wes said we could have this one. Well, fuck. So he called his assistant and said, hey, I need you to go grab this ending here, get in a cab, get over here as fast as fucking possible. And literally was cutting it together as they were watching it. And Wes said, don't worry about it. We'll just 
We'll tell everybody there's some technical difficulties real fast. They cut down everything real fast for two minutes. But that stop between the climax and the end of the movie killed it. Yeah, they, they no just, shit. Mm-hmm. Cause it, it, it fucked with the flow. It did. Yeah. You know, like yeah. that. And Nightmare 1 and 2 were both tonally different than the rest of the franchise. Oh, absolutely. They, they absolutely were. And if you, you know, Nightmare 1 was supposed to be more of, you know, a super scary, you know, horror. You know. Well, no, you, you, you would tell the difference because the first one, like you said, Freddy was only eight minutes, eight, nine minutes, something like that in the yeah. movie. But the, the whole ordeal is, is he barely spoke. Like yeah. he barely had any lines it's, compared to the other ones where he started to have like, you know, one liners and stuff like that. And it's he, weird, but at the same time, it, it I, I don't think you lost much. Oh. Because it's very well, very much so. Yeah, the whole villain is the idea of the villain. Yeah, and so it perpetuates everything. So while you don't have a lot, whole lot of cre- screen time, it, it it creeps in there throughout the entirety of of, of the film. Yeah, but I don't, see, I don't think in the first one, Freddy needed a whole bunch of fucking screen. Yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. And even though, um, like it's that it's not a amazing movie. It still for the time it. Did its job. Yeah. It's scared, yes, it and it did its job differently enough to create its own voice. Well, it, it made it, it, you it, know because if you look at Jason and um and Halloween, okay, look at Friday the Thirteenth and Halloween, okay, two totally different characters, same concept on the basics on on the on butter the bones, basics. yes. But okay, that's why I give credit to Wes Craven. No, no. Well, that's what I was about to say yeah. is that Freddy is on a different plane and it's for for what it wasn't West just Craven freddy to me complete that, or what for what freddy uh yeah. what accomplished yeah. it wasn't just the creativity of the killer uh that separated nightmare to me versus other slasher fix it was his choice in the final girl yeah all right the, the you know the, they, they teased you with uh uh the, the blonde in the first one and, and we're all thinking at the time all right she's going to be the you know the final girl the heroine yeah well see you no know, most like most movies don't do that that's the thing and they did that the fact that you thought that she was going to be like the exactly the main actress and yeah. she ends up dying like about 20 minutes into the yeah, movie she had the uh the tina the, i believe yes she had the, the the appeal the you know the focus of the film the uh-huh. first 20 minutes yep. you saw nancy just as a background character and stuff like that and then all of a sudden boom tina's fucking dead and you're like what the fuck? And like, like, nope, motherfucking bookworm, goddamn Nancy is yep. the fucking goddamn final girl. All right, and this Wes Craven once again taking those horror tropes that were already established and turning it on its fucking side yeah. and saying this is not your typical fucking film. This is not your normal fucking slasher film. Uh, we are going to be doing things a little bit fucking different. It's funny though, like talking about your normal slasher flick, you know. But what is your normal flash slasher film? Well, that's the thing. Like, this was done in the early 80s. Yes. So, like, back then, what exactly would have, what would have been Jason, a, uh, a so normal the, so the Friday slasher 13th, flick? Um, well, they, see, no, there was a lot of copycats because Jason and um, and Michael Myers were big, but there was a whole, there, you know, you yeah, got the burning, you got to think of, like, uh, graduation day. You, 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 yeah, there's so many yeah. fucking horror well, movies. Well, you remember yeah. going to, like, Blockbuster, right? Yeah. Or your local video store. For your fucking weekend VHS yep. horror show. That was my favorite part. Walking okay. in and just yes. seeing all the horror yeah. oh, the, the covers you of the have, horror. Yeah. And, and you have... Hey, Crystal, what, do you know about... anything about that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you do? Okay. Every Friday night, we'd get Chinese food and go over to Hollywood Video. I'm Damn, surprised, I'm surprised son. You really? Yeah. I was. Well, how young you are. Chinese food and family video. Yes! No, yeah. family video. And, no, no. It, Family Video was the best place. They also had the fucking uh, and movie uh, time. Yeah, your, movie time. But you remember, uh, Family section. Video had the uh, um, what were the uh, the VHS that were the, the, the different ones? The um, beta tape, beta tapes. Remember yeah, they had oh, that, yeah, little, yeah. that little section oh, with the beta yeah. tapes. Yep. Fuck the betas. <laughs> Fuck I remember the betas. those. You didn't like beta? Beta was definitely a much more high quality. I was say it had higher resolution. Yeah, absolutely. But you know what? They didn't have the backing of yeah. porn. Yeah, yeah they yeah, did. No, they did have that. No, they had the they had they had beta porn. No, they did have it. Not app. No, for a while they did. VHS fucking uh, clamped on to the porn industry, and that's why VHS won. I don't, no, 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 no. I'm just saying, at, I remember at our family video, we had a little porn oh, section. Yeah. Well, it isn't just, yeah. Remember, yeah we we yeah. talked about that yeah. in the last Blockbuster yes. episode. Y'all yeah. should check that yes. one out. Uh, anyway, uh, so, but. Nostalgic. So, Wes Craven just <laughs> yeah. creates this fucking different environment than 
what is typical at the time. Different expectation level. Yeah, but there really so wasn't a lot. There to- was at the time. There was, and that's and they were actually being burned, getting burned out. Uh, like they were, horror movies were no longer making as much money as they were in the early eighties. See, and that's weird because late seventies and early eighties were. It, late 70s so, so mid 70s into until about 1981 they were fucking cash registers yeah they were absolutely oh, cash yeah. registers 82 and 83 they were no longer bringing in the financial success that they were people were mm. starting to, you know, the studios were starting to get a little wary uh because of so many copycats so many things that the, the market got completely inundated d rate not even be rated yeah. but a bunch of but fucking CDs, C, Fs, D fucking rated. goddamn like rated movies. High yep. school projects yes. turned into slasher yeah. flicks. Yep. Yeah. Yes. So like the breather. Yeah. Well, you also gotta remember the early nineties, there's a lot of movies that were like not even theatrical yeah. releases. There were more direct to video releases yes. of horror movies. Fuck, whatever. But but it's a believable title for it that could era. Be. It yeah. fucking it, could be. And and it took over the industry, completely saturated it. To the point where everything had been played out, and just like he was saying, it just pittered out. It, well, that's it, the thing. Like, uh, fucking uh, local town fucking video stores, you know? Hollywood right. Video, fucking Video Plus, Blockbuster, mm-hmm. Video And then House, finally yep. revamped you know, in the 2000s yeah. to be complete gore. They fest. all have yeah. them. They all have all of these trash horror movies yep. that what? are straight to VHS at the time. Yeah, straight My to video. favorite thing you know? ever. Yeah. Mystery Science Theater 3000 horror ser- uh, series. Yes, yeah. When they're like, oh, is it the blood worms and what else? <laughs> I, I actually have a question. Do you know if they ever made a copycat film of Freddy Krueger? Uh, there was different yes. ones that... Uh, Rick so- and Morty. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> shit. The Goldbergs. Um, no, so they... There, there, of course, there was numerous, numerous different uh, ones fucking with dreams. And actually, I think think it was paramount that turned down creating um freddy krueger or great doing nightmare on elm street because at the same time they were worried it's too close to another film they were doing at the time um dream dreamscape dreamscape there you go with dennis quaid yeah that's a good movie all right so they were they were like nope this is too close about that yeah this is too close to uh to what we're, we're currently making it'll be competing against itself that's a paramount thought. That, yeah. I don't know. But that's what they yeah, thought. That's, that's, that's a bullshit what they ass thought. Ass <laughs> All right. That's a like, bullshit we're fucking We're already excuse. doing something with fucking dreams. All right. So, no, no, we ain't doing another thing with dreams. That's dumb. Fucking dummies. So, uh, no, they were already, you know, there were already other places that were, you know, kind of delving and trying to find the, the secret sauce mm-hmm. to revitalize horror. But the studios were already getting a little, you know, gun shy because they were, the past two years before this, they were like, yeah, we're not seeing the returns that we thought they were. Audiences were kind of getting fucking, you know, overdone. Yeah. So they're like, all right, another one, another one, another one. And that's really, that's totally understandable, though. Yeah. It really is. Because they, I don't know, back then, they all kind of fucking blend together. Exactly. You know, it Look doesn't out. matter. Like, yeah. you could have, fuck, a dude with a, a fucking chainsaw arm. Yep. Right? You could have one with an uh, axe for a hand. Yep. You know, they all do the same fucking killing. It's the same concept. Not really, because Freddy, was, like I said, no, everybody saying, copied more no, of uh, Jason uh, and Michael Myers. Yeah, but that's what that's why that's what we're saying is then Nightmare comes along, yeah. and just gives the horror industry the slasher gives it a different gives it a know. different like taste, a different yes. taste of horror enough to revitalize the audience into saying, "Holy shit, things can be different." Oh. All right, so let's continue giving people a shot. Um, and a lot of it was, I'm going to go with casting choices. So Robert England originally envisioned Freddy Krueger much older, much older than what we see him. Really? Yeah. No, he, he, like I said, he was basing it on that creepy old drunk and stuff yeah. like that in his mind, you know, it's like that. And he had multiple people. No, Scream. Scream actually made it look like more of what he would probably would have looked like yeah. because the Scream had that little cameo yes. with the, with the janitor. Yeah. Uh, pushing no. the mop. So that's he, probably what he probably he, looked like. He had multiple older actors, you know, audition. And he felt that, unfortunately, even though the older actors, there's something about old old men that is creepy. Not, not just creepy, but <laughs> people can find a softness in, even yeah. though the world is is hard and cruel, and these people can be fucking you know messed up. You know, there, there's something about an old man that you're like, hmm, maybe he's wise. Maybe he knows something. <laughs> All right, maybe he's a Back then? Yeah. Back right. then? Yeah, I could uh, see that. So I was going to argue with you about the whole finding a softness in old men, but 
I can't because what's the one with the old guy who's blind and the kids breaking yes, his house? Yes, exactly. My oh, mom. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Don't breathe. Don't, Don't breathe. breathe. Yes. My mom watched both of those. Even seeing both of them still feels bad for him. Yes, exactly. It's this older dude and like that. That it was absolutely written to be the bad guy. Yes, it was against other. Did you say bad older guys? Toad? Sure, we'll go with that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, he was absolutely written to be a bad guy, bitten to be the villain of the film. And then the sequel comes out. No, we're going to focus on, on him. He's going to be our fucking hero of the yeah. goddamn film. All right. No, Even and, though he is still the fucking bad guy who kidnapped. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And like impregnated <laughs> a little girl against, not a little girl, a teenage girl against yes. the will. It's, yeah. It, you know, but it's because it's An something about old guys that you're just like, hmm. yeah. But hmm. if you watch. That movie? Yeah. See, if you watch the first one, you don't you you totally get that vibe. You know, like he's the old blind guy and these fucking hooligans and fucking pieces of shit are gonna go in and fucking rob him and take him for everything he's got. So they can leave and go to what? What was it? Uh fucking California, I think. And then the second one comes up. It told it no, you don't get that vibe anymore. You get the the creepy old Hello, kitty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, but that'll be the you get you get pocket. that. But that vibe. would be like well, especially especially when you go down to the fucking basement. But you sound just he, like and, him, <laughs> and you see he's got that fucking and you see he's got the fucking girl yeah. chained up, yes. yeah, for breeding yeah. purposes only. Breeding yeah. purposes. That would be only. that's like, what is that's what her job was. It was hundred percent. Be a sign on the door. Yes. Breeding purposes. Uh, yes. <laughs> Depos- <laughs> Deposits only. Yeah. It'd be, be but. That would be the, you know, if, you know, to, to use another Wes Craven film, you know, people under the stairs. Yep. Yeah. You know, you had these people breaking into this fucking house to rob them blind. And all of a sudden, no, we're falling in love with the people in the fucking house. Those creepy motherfucking inbreeding sons of bitches. Uh-huh. All right. They have the kids. Oh, no. I can kind of understand where they're coming from. No. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> you don't fucking identify with them. All right. Uh, and so, but and that's why... Uh, so uh, one of Wes Craven's friends, you know, said, suggested, you know, giving Robert England an audition uh, based on some work that he was doing at the time. He's like, no, I think he, he could fucking do it. And Robert England came in and just fucking killed it, fucking killed it in the fucking audition. And Wes Craven was like, all right, yeah, we're going a different direction. We're going a fucking different direction. And we are, yeah, this is, this is the guy. <laughs> he was but yeah, but when you see him, in, yeah. And when you see him as an actor, he doesn't look like he would be that type of person, too. It, that's He's the, the nicest point. guy. And he was also in a movie called Galaxy of Terror. Do you remember that one? Yes. For a Roger Corman film, uh, which was actually uh, production designed by uh, James Cameron. But uh, when you see him in the Freddy Krueger, when you see him opposite of his makeup... He's just a chill guy. He's actually the most a guy that you'd like to have a beer with, just to hang I out. I want to hang out with Robert. Oh, Ingram. I know you would. So you goddamn bad. I would too. I mean, seriously, no. He's that is his iconic role. Just like I, I, I do the same thing with Kane Hodder. Yes. I would love to fucking. Sp- fucking I would too. I oh, god, oh god, I, I he would was have considered. A, he was considered for the role of Freddy. I couldn't see I that couldn't happening. See that he I, was considered. I can't for the role see of that. Freddy. See, the thing about Freddy Krueger is that he's not this big hulking guy. Well, you he's say little, that, but at the same time, he's a lanky guy. He's like a like a skinny guy. Yeah. At the same time, yeah. looking at Robert, do what you is, think? What, why are you wearing the print? What the fuck? Because I'm a fucking princess tonight. You're trying to usurp my royalty. Apparently. All right. Fight me. Fight to the fucking. Do death. you want me to? <laughs> <laughs> I will break you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> He will sit on you like the fat guy in idiocracy. <laughs> you know what that reminds me of? That time we got drunk and you slammed my head right into the f- bottom of the concrete. God damn. Oh, yeah. No, me and, me and Stu have gotten drunk many times. <laughs> so oh, no. I'm told. So you're that was one he... of my few blackouts so that you... I don't remember. You ended up going to the hospital. I still slept on the and couch. I'm still mad about that because I had a $500 goddamn bill and I fucking got spicy motor. <laughs> <laughs> Spicy Bonner. Spicy Yay! Bonner. Yes. On your fucking show. Yes. And your Harley wife. washed my goddamn Motorola Razor. I was so mad. I was so fucking mad. And so I you are why words are hard. No, he was already fucking. No, okay. nah. no he, 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 he slammed rode the short bus in his childhood. Don't Fuck blame you. me. <laughs> fuck you. You know, he slammed my head right down. I remember we were fu- we were wrestling or something yes. like that. I don't even know what the fuck I was talking about originally. Oh, yo. No, yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. Fuck you by Stu? Yes. <laughs> Oh, no, wait a minute. That means we get to pick. No. I... Stu picks. No. It literally says Stu picks. It says Stu picks. 
That would, mm, <laughs> I I feel like I recall that being either having to I vote never happened. No, uh, you know what we can vote? No, I think top. it. No, I think Chase is right. It yeah. had to be a respin. Oh yeah, that's right. It's a respin. Damn it! I was gonna reward everybody. I was gonna reward nope. everybody with nope. something nice. Spin. Respin. Just following the rules. Fuck you by stew again. No, this is a fuck you stew. Oh, oh, the fuck you stew. That means you get a punishment shot. Okay, I will take some alert. No, what is your... No, no. I don't have hypnotic. I do not have any bird's eye chili whiskey, so I will take some alert. <laughs> You're supposed to be stocking on your fucking hypnotic. I stocked with alert. Watermelon? Huh? Malort's not malort fucking watermelon? punishment for you. I will, t- I will literally take what you had. Yeah, make him a mal- malort melon. No, I'll just a make malort? him a fucking malort. A I'm malort melon? Shit. Yeah, malort melon. Malort Malellan. 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 General Malellan. <laughs> no, you got to do the. Mal- he wants the same as you. Yeah, he wants to see what it's like. No, he said he'll do it more. Go ahead and, I yeah, just, I don't just care. drink I'll, off the just excess. Right much, just drink off the excess. Are you going to give him it's an It's been oh. a while for the Hemelort. Yeah, you love it, so don't worry about it. You you always take it's it in delicious. Some. I should take some of that home and rub it on the door for bison. <laughs> I can't believe you got a spicy boner. It's been a while since I you've had has, one of those. It has. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, remembering I'm, that night. I, I'm remembering that night it was your birthday what was it, it yes it was your birthday yeah when you wrapped my fucking truck and fucking shrink wrap you ass yeah, no, that was, a, couple <laughs> years. No, that was a, a year or two later yeah i remember uh, that shit waking up yeah. to that fucking bullshit we went out uh for your birthday and some chinese fucking dark japanese fucking place and they had karaoke going on yeah and we had lemon drops all that night. Yeah, I was buying you, you know, you shots because you wanted to go toe toe with me. And then anytime you would turn around, I'd order like two more shots for myself. Yep. Uh, in order just to start feeling it. <laughs> all right. You got fucking lit. I got fucking lit. And this was fairly early on to me being with Harley. Yep. And I think we already know each other yeah. just for you know, about a year or something. Yeah. Like that. And well, we went all, all, you know, Sammy, you. Harley, myself, we all went back to my place after we closed the bar down. Um, the last thing I remember that night is literally putting my key in my front door. Uh, that's the last thing I remember. I was passed out on the yeah. couch. And then <laughs> I remember that. I opened my eyes. It's like fucking 8 o'clock in the morning. You know, I'm like, man, I'm feeling I'm feeling fucking good. <laughs> I'm feeling really yeah, fucking good. Yeah, because they put good. some fucking IVs in you. Yeah, I had no idea. I had a fucking hangover <laughs> right. from hell. I had no idea. You got be- banana bagged without your yes. knowledge? Yes. <laughs> yes. That is they they got thing so ever. worried that he got fucking alcohol poisoning. Yeah. They, they left me on the fucking couch, passed out, but they took him to the fucking evil. When I hit my hey, point. Y'all just left point, me to fucking die, so whatever. When I hit my point, I'm it's like, growing I am going to fuck <laughs> to right? sleep. Yeah. I don't care where I am. I'm like, I am going to fuck to sleep. Yeah. And leave me the fuck alone. There ain't nothing you can fucking do. My body is ready to go to sleep now. <laughs> fuck you. Harley hadn't discovered that about me yet. So she freaked out because she couldn't wake me up. So she thought I had alcohol poisoning and Sammy thought I had alcohol poisoning apparently. Then they called the ambulance. They couldn't get me to fucking, you know, respond and shit like that because once again, I'm drunk drunk and now my body is like i'm done it is time to fucking goddamn recuperate so they take me to the hospital apparently give me some fucking goddamn banana bags i fucking come home i you know still don't remember any of this <laughs> like that and, and go back to fucking sleep <laughs> right. i wake up the next morning I'm like oh man this is nice why is everybody so fucking asleep god damn i fucking was drinking so much more than everybody else how the fuck am i feel so good and all of them are so fucking passed out <laughs> what the fuck god damn lightweight that's fucking awesome <laughs> right? and then it wasn't until they all started waking up that they explained to me what happened the night before apparently me and ron you know ron started talking like he could you know fucking wrestle me and take me and me being like no, <laughs> no, no. And I think it was even fight. No, seriously, if I remember I'm slamming your head into the concrete at any point. Yeah, and I also no, I remember doing fight. No, I remember <laughs> I did something to you. I remember I smashed you into the wall, and some of your fucking mass fell or something like but that. But once again, if I end up on top of you, literally slamming well, your you're head fucking into 400 the concrete, pounds, you motherfucker. I know. <laughs> so once again, I don't think. <laughs> I don't think you can take me. <laughs> um, all right, back to the movie. So, it, Fight. Uh, yeah, and then I wake up and find out that Harley had 
had washed my fucking clothes and my fucking Motorola razor was in my fucking pocket. Uh-huh. I had to get, I had a $500 fucking goddamn ambulance bill. I had a fucking goddamn, you buy a new phone. I was pissed. <laughs> I was pissed. It was a good night it, until you woke up. Yeah. Up, yeah. Up, up, up until that point, I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, I had a hangover from hell from what I remember. Yeah. That was good times. Yeah. Um, good times. But anyway. Other than our fucking firework. Fireworks shows, you know. Those were good times, too. Roman, can- Roman Candle yeah, Wars. That's a, that's other time. Remember <laughs> oh, nights. yeah. But anyway, so Nightmare on Elm Street <laughs> came Shot in, in the fucking uh, face. Fucking it happens. revitalized yeah. everything. Uh, yeah, really Johnny did. Depp. Johnny Depp. First major film role. Yeah. Film role right there. That's a funny scene. Tina, though. Not t- in that one, but the other one. Tina, though. I've seen her in movies, oh, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When he's cooking. Oh, yeah. you talking about the yeah. uh, the the uh, what would drugs do to you or something like that? Yeah. From I think that was in uh, part six. It was. Yeah. Pretty and uh, what's his name was in there too. The uh, uh, fucking um, I forgot his name, but he also played uh, Boba Fett in the uh, um, uh, the Boba Fett uh, the claymation the uh, um, uh, what chicken? Uh, what's the fucking claymation? Robot chicken. Robot chicken. Robot chicken. Yeah, yeah. He played the voice of Boba Fett in the Star Wars specials. Who Johnny Depp? No, is the actor in uh, part six of uh, Freddy's Dead. There's a lot of actors apart from Freddie. Which Day. one, motherfucker? That's what I'm trying to remember his name. He was in Road Trip. He was in. Which character was he? I don't remember his name. I can't remember Which? all the fucking. What? Describe. He was on the. About he him. was on the ponytail. The one that fucking did horrible. No, yes, the yes, one that did yes, the uh, yes. the uh, like oh, the where he was okay. in like the uh, uh, yeah. the um, game basically yeah. where Freddie's yeah. playing the game. Spencer, I think, was the character's name. Yeah. I think. Uh, I think it was Spence or Spencer or something like that. The no, which. Uh, wait, wait. Uh, Nightmare Six. Yeah, uh, Freddy's oh, dead. Freddy's dead. Yeah, yeah. He the was one, the, he was over the yeah. ponytail. Yeah, uh, the one doing. Oh, he was. Uh, and shit. Buh, 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 buh. His dad was the fucking. You know, that's so funny. Tom Arnold and fucking Roseanne Barr were in that. That one. was great. It that was, was fucking yeah. hilarious. It was a nice little cameo in there. But, I forgot those two were there. Yeah, so that's where they were together. Wes Craven, oh, Brecken Meyer did not want to that's cast. It was. Yeah, it was Brecken Meyer, Johnny Depp. Wes Craven thought Johnny Depp was fucking sickly and pale looking. He's like. Why would I cast that as the, you know, the lead, you know, male? Wasn't well, he in 21 Jump Street at the time? Yeah, uh, yes. He was. Yeah. All right. Why would I cast him as the fucking, you know, the the, the, the lead male? It was just starting. In his mind, yeah. it would have just been some sport, you know, some jock guy, you know, and stuff like that. And it was Wes Craven's daughter that said, no, no, you need to cast him. He is fucking hot. <laughs> All right. And he's like, oh, okay. Okay, if you whatever, so we can thank goddamn Freddy Krueger for Johnny Depp. Yeah, because yeah, that was his first candy, movie, I guess. No, I've got a job, Dad. Yeah, Crystal loves Johnny Depp. I do. <laughs> He's awesome. More Was than Freddy, Freddy by means. No, <laughs> maybe <laughs> you know. Uh, so if Johnny Depp didn't have a film career, then what's Eden Gilbert Grape wouldn't have been made. So could we also thank Wes Craven for Leonardo DiCaprio? What would Lee, what would Wes Craven have to do with Wes him? Craven did not direct uh, no no what's no eating he didn't. grape but I feel like they would have just just by making chosen a by making Johnny Depp John by by casting Johnny Depp in his film that created Johnny Depp to start becoming you know rocketed to to stardom right but yeah but what, Leonardo DiCaprio but started his in Critters three who Gray? else who else was in what's he, he who was the one of the the the, the, the star of what's eating Gilbert Gray? no 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 Leonardo DiCaprio started his no, no, in no, Critters no. three but he may have started it there just like he was also in family uh, you know our growing pains or whatever it was growing our family ties uh growing pains one, yeah growing pains um but if Johnny Depp wasn't the, wasn't be, didn't have the chance to become a film you know star then I don't I can't say what's eating Gilbert Grape would necessarily have been made, which means if what's eating Gilbert Grape isn't made, that means Leonardo DiCaprio isn't cast to show his potential acting so range. So it's like the thirty-seven fucking uh, what degrees of the Kevin Bacon? Thirty-seven degrees of Kevin Bacon. Yes. Uh, Are we going that? Six right now? degrees, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> but what's that? You know, butterfly effect. Yeah. Exactly. Shut the fuck if, up, if, Chase. If this isn't fucking done, <laughs> fuck you, Chase. You can smack yeah. him if you'd like. So huh? if we if we don't if we no, don't have you do it for me. He's no, you, you got a point. You nightmare. got a point. Yeah, yeah, no, you get nightmare. But what was that? My hand. I can actually. But also, if we didn't have nightmare, we wouldn't have had fucking bitch like Amber Heard. Butterfly tap. What is a butterfly? Amber Heard. Yeah, if we didn't have nightmare, we wouldn't have Amber Heard. That's true. You got a point. Well, that was a nightmare. So yeah, she is was. a fucking nightmare. Yes. She's an insane crack whore. Yes. Who cringes at her dog? Uh, no, so she 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 in its eyes. One of the dogs. Yeah. She shit on the bed. She okay. shit she on the did. bed. And during the trial, what, you've never shit anywhere. She before? shit on the bed during the trial. No, no, no. <laughs> during the trial, this woman is like pretend crying, and yeah. she has. 
holds a kid up for, 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 for a fucking photo. Photo op, 100%. But she's that She's taking same, a bump. Yeah. Yes, she snaps yeah, like She's not bumps. taking a bump. She is literally holding it there for the photo op. No, no, no. Later That's on she's in, a, doing. in a different one, she puts it up her nose and, and then she puts it back into her wrist. Yeah. We're Who talking about put, two different things, man. I know what you're talking about. No, she did not take a bump. She did that like four or five different times. She did not take a bump. On the stand, I firmly believe nobody is that fucking retarded. No, just, I think just she on is the that bench. Fucking uh, retarded. I, I have to have enough faith in humanity. We will not produce you, a human that is that seriously? retarded. Look, really, I, Joe Biden. That motherfucker's dementia. That motherfucker's retarded. He has dementia. Dementia is retarded for dead people. Okay, (laughs) exactly. The guy can't even figure out what he's when he's fucking leaving the fucking (laughs) stage when he's uh, doing his old speeches and stuff like that. He 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 can't figure out what the fucker tries to shake the hand of a person that just shook his hand again Mm -hmm. and doesn't realize that. Oh, I just shook your hand. (laughs) Fucking Biden. (laughs) <laughs> fucking dumb fuck. By the way, I just want to point out your board. Suck red and green, baby. So hard, bitch. Motherfucking Freddy Krueger right there. That's what I said it for. Him and his fucking That's what mom. I did. I'm sure you did on purpose. I'm sure. Back. I did it on purpose. I'm sure you did. Yeah, I get to put the colors on those. I'm sure you did. Fuck you. The color. I was agreeing with you. Yeah, you can Freddy set the colors, colors. above the sound effects. Do you get to put it to uh, chartreuse? <laughs> I right, fuck off. Look, Gay! No. Most I, guys I, I know only know four colors, and that's like red, blue, orange. Pink is pink. There's not like salmon, nothing else, and you know chartreuse. I have three sisters. One of them was a cosmo- is a cosmetology major. And um, okay, I so know what color t- is chartreuse? It's like a. Have you seen Coraline? Yes. It's a scene she pops through her eyes when she says chartreuse, and it's like a sh- shade of green, or is it greenish yellow? It is a neon. Green, yellow. Neon color. Okay, so uh, honestly, don't remember where we where were before our little tangents. Oh, uh, no, we were just talking about the first Nightmare on Elm Street, yeah. so yeah, talk uh, about the uh, character. Also, you know what? The whole issue of how he became the way he was. Did you ever want to talk about that? Um, as far as uh, a killer or as far as... No, how he was made the way he was, like what what made him the well, way Well, that doesn't happen. You don't find that out until... The last uh, movie. It was, no, 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 it was no, the no, first movie. No, they, they definitely no. talk about in the first movie. Yeah, Nancy and his mother. Um, or her mother. No, I'm talking but about his like, motivation. You don't necessarily find out the the original motivation. I'm, until I'm later. talking about like what makes Freddy be able to do the dream yeah. shit. Yes. No, but I'm talking about well, how Freddy became burned and how what, what the whole purpose of why he well, looks the way that, he was. No, you find that out in the first one. Mm-hmm. Well, I know that. Did That's why I said. Did you guys watch any of the uh, um, Freddy's Nightmares yes. TV sh- series? Yes. Friday the Thirteenth had a TV show also, which was nowhere near as good as no, Freddy's Nightmares. No, it wasn't. <laughs> you know, Freddy had a fucking rap album. Yes, I did. <laughs> Wait, I was actually gra- I was going to grab a song off of that. Trust me, I was thinking about it, but I didn't know if you wanted that or not. It was a really? waste of fucking time. Yeah, because barely was it any Robert of Robert England. Uh, yeah, but it it wasn't him rapping, which was a waste. They did, had him uh, include a couple of fucking zingers and shit like that, but that was it. And then they had the uh, Alice Cooper the and, and Robert children. England. Is was uh, most of the of the album? Yeah, but you remember Alice yep. Cooper also yes. had that Robert England on one of yes. his songs. Yeah, no, they absolutely. Uh, but this was later on after a few films. They, they you know, Freddie became such a cultural icon that they milked the shit out of him. Well, um, they do that with a lot, though. Yeah, with, no, with yeah, a they, lot of them. Yeah, they so, milked the shit out of him. Um, what's cool is though is that he's the original and the only. What was all that crinkling sound? I've been good. What was all of that crinkling sound that I just heard? Enter I didn't Ragnar. hear shit. I'm Shut sorry. Shut the fuck up. I'm sorry, man, but I could hear it very clearly. Very clearly. Hear what? The crinkling sound of Ron grabbing oh. f- cheesy poofs. Cheesy poofs. All right. I've had a masterpiece. Man. Cheese poofs. Get my cheesy poofs. cheese puffs is what it's written. <laughs> uh, Those are good. That was they absolutely very clearly loud crinkling sounds. Give me the fucking wheel. Jesus Good Christ. job. What the yeah. fuck, man? This is, this is fucking bullshit. You're the one. I don't like to fuck you, Stu. You literally have a jar of silence. What was stuff. that? Jar of punishment. God damn it. You didn't even spin. You want me to spin it again? It like moved once. I'll I don't spin know it again. It Go ahead. Y'all jump ahead. like jumped down my throat there when I did go. that. I'm just trying to make it fair. Stupid crystal pit. Come on! <laughs> what hey. the fuck? Hey, this is my lucky sweater. Chase, go it get is. the trash can. 
What? Oh. It, it, Did he I, move it back? I moved it back. Oh. It Are you really going to pick that fucking shit again? Please don't. Please, please don't do, do that to do. me. Do. This is your show. Yes. You have two options. Okay. 99 Watermelon. All right. Or a redo. No, please don't. I'm going to go with a redo. Fuck you. I, 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 I left it up to the man who picked the, st- the, the show. I'm absolutely hey. going with a redo. That can work out in your favor. Yeah. And my build up a tolerance to it. Oh, you are hyper You are so thought. worried. Oh, I love this so what much. Are you you, you got to spin again. Show. It's beautiful. No, hey. redo as in hey. redo the, the shot. She said no. No, yeah, no. no, redo as in redoing the watermelon. Yeah, that's what she was. Oh, yes. okay. All right. Yeah. I see. I, that, I was. I thought it was a redo of the spin. No, redo as in oh. hit him again oh. with the same fucking drink. So, Stu, thank you. I'm honored that you let me come on the show. I'm so happy <laughs> to have you here. <laughs> because You're like a school, giddy school girl. The fact that this created this drink for Ron, we wouldn't have had this. <laughs> We would not have had this without Crystal. Uh, hey, so just so you know, all right, if you puke, you have to redo Dude, it. Dude, you know what? Yes. You don't have to fucking remind me that. You're a fucking I, asshole. I, no, have I, to I know that you. fucking shit. I have to remind you on this because you would do the <laughs> same goddamn thing. Why, why, are, like, why are you so scared to pick? Because I don't like this. It's not a snake. Why are you doing Miami like Dolphins a... fucking hand movements to a <laughs> fucking hit you get the you got the Down your throat. Down your throat. Swallow, bitch. Swallow. I am swallowing. Swallow. <laughs> it is swallowed. It's like that fucking shot just mouth fucked oh, your God. throat. That shit stays and lingers for like 10 minutes with watermelon and wo- Linger longer, linger longer. Fuck linger you. Longer. This is bullshit, man. <laughs> I'm so um, enjoyed now. So why did you get a punishment shot? Why? The I'm crinkling of you. the bag. Apparently. Oh, okay. Right. I'm not touching that bag. Fuck you. I mean, it's, it's, You're looking a little hungry. It's funny. It didn't even get put to a but vote she, for he No, he, he, volunt- he, he, he knew he fucked like up. A he knew he fucked up. Didn't even require a vote because he knew he fucked up. Good job. Good job, Ron. <sighs> Hey, Stu, you might be getting a present. Talk. Swallow. So. I don't feel good. Rub your nipples. Little help. Oh. There you go. See? Oh, that feels so fucking good. Mm-hmm. Were you cupping balls right there? What the fuck were <laughs> you doing? <laughs> like, arr, arr. He's cupping the balls as he's getting his throat <laughs> yes. fucked right now. Are you fucking That's suck? good. Hey, That's I good. didn't do that. I, get, I left it up to him. Yeah, and you know he was going to pick the fucking shit that I didn't like. This fucking sucks. I mean, you get, gave get, him two get options. Back, get back yeah. to the fucking movie. So yeah, she did. It was depending on how much Stu loved you. It's a lot of love. We're not posting these videos. <laughs> oh no, no, no! That that you. that went to your wife. Such sweet suffering. So oh, no, the girls these are can getting see it. Fucking posted, dude. Oh fuck! All right, <laughs> fuck that shit. Okay, get back to the movie. Back to the movie. Wait, so we're not doing what? We're talking it's about uh, posted. <laughs> for those posted. who don't know the original backstory of. Sir Frederick, Frederick Charles Kruger. Uh, Charles is middle name. Yes, it is. Oh. Yes, Frederick Charles Kruger. That flows. Yes, that's his name. You know what's funny is that, he said, that when you say it like that, it sounds very regal and defined and um, pompous. Like Nobody names the their kid and try to sound like a serial killer. Nobody names them. I know. All right. Well, so. I mean, Jeffrey Dahmer. I would not have sounded like, a, he went by Jeff. Okay. I know. He went by Jeff. Charles Manson. Right. <laughs> he went by Charlie. Or Chuck. Uh, William Gates. He went by Bill. Well, I mean, everybody has a fucking but name. But they don't sound you like know. fucking serial killers when they fucking name no, them. No, Wayne? no, no. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry? The J- clown dude? John Wayne Gacy. John Wayne Gacy. Yeah, he didn't go by John Wayne. <laughs> well, no, yeah. John. Yeah, like, yeah, John. Or Johnny. Did he have John Wayne in his name? That was his name. That was his John name. John Wayne, Wayne Gacy? Gacy? That was his full name. Yeah. I thought he just went by John Gacy. Yeah, he did. He That's what did. he went by. Oh, okay. But when he went, but when uh, he became the fucking clown killer, it was his yeah. full fucking name came yeah. out. Yeah, Four. assassins and serial killers have three first names. <laughs> Jesus, no, <Nah. laughs> no, assassins have three first names. Um, killers, serial killers just have three names. That's yeah. how we know them by. So, what would Jason Voorhees? He didn't have a middle name. So that's why we don't know Fred, you know, Freddy Krueger as Frederick Charles Krueger. 
He's just Freddy Krueger. Jason Voorhees. Yeah, uh, Jason in Voorhees. Real life, Michael Myers. But once again, in real life, serial killers, they in real life they earn the three names. They, oh, really? Yeah, that's how we well, know about media. Well, Jason Voorhees. That's why Charles Manson doesn't have three names because he wasn't a serial killer because he wasn't a killer. He wasn't. He, no, he he, uh, no, he no no. That's the funny he part. He never he never did it. it but he still it. got fucked for it. Yep. But oh. that's why he doesn't have three. Uh, you know, we don't we don't know. You know him yeah, as but have you Charles seen that motherfucker Alexander or fucking oh Manson. yeah. Right. He's got a he's got a big cross or what? What is uh, he a big a, cross? A big cross on his forehead, huh? No, a big cross. Mean, swastika. Swastika. There you go. Yeah. Sorry. You know, you, <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, I'm I'm Are you fucking, itching over there? Dude, it fucking sucks. Are you, itching, are you itching to chime in? I have no, watermelon and malort cross. in my mouth and yeah. it's just, I'm a cross in the head. I'm like, oh it's not a cross. Uh, no, no, I, I, no I, I I was wrong. Forgive me. Sorry. All right, go back uh, to your movie. So uh he was Freddy Krueger was a child killer that killed a lot of fucking kids, terrorized Springwood, Ohio, uh, until they fucking caught him. Then they what during trial it came out they didn't the the warrant wasn't properly signed on the right spot uh the search warrant so all the fucking evidence was thrown out as you know fruit of the poisonous tree kruger walks all right and the parents of the town were like fuck this noise <laughs> this motherfucker's paying all right they end up uh chasing him and uh blocking him into a building light the fucking building on fire and Kruger dies. And really, they only showed so, that. They didn't show that in the original. They explained it. But yeah. in the remake is when they actually showed, like, the whole ordeal. Which one? Yes. Uh, the remake with uh, Jackie Early. Oh. Well, no. They showed other flashes. But the, yeah, they showed little flashes. But yeah. that one they actually was, like, West the whole Craven. scene. Yeah. They showed it in the West Craven And one. you see the whole trial in the uh, first episode of the TV series. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know yeah. that. Go ahead and play uh, Nancy's mother telling the story. What did you do, mother? A bunch of us parents tracked him down after they let him out. We found him in an old abandoned boiler room where he used to take his kids. Go on. We took gasoline. We poured it all around the place and made a trail of it out the door. Then lit the whole thing up and watched it burn. But he can't get you now. He's dead, honey, because mommy killed him. See, but you know what? One thing I love about this movie is that a lot of movies, when it comes to horror, like Jason Voorhees, you know, the whole how he became the way he was yep. basically revenge on his mother being killed and you know his mother telling him it's basically like almost like a psycho type of effect you know his mother telling him kill them for me kill them for him jason but this one all the fucking parents like claiming revenge for him you know killing their kids so throwing him in a you know put him in the boiler room um trapping him in there and then setting him on fire and that's how he became the way he was. He became this demon. He, he basically got granted from Satan himself to become this demon to haunt people in their dreams. You don't know that in the first one. No, we don't. But that's what you kind of, it's kind of expected. Yeah. I mean, how, how else would he become that way? Just pure hatred. I mean, I mean well, I you guess, find that out in yeah. the uh, fifth, fifth, no, fifth or sixth. How he got his powers and you, it's confirmed in the sixth, which is garbage. Yeah. So um, the way I saw it is that he kind of inherited a very fucked up mind and then because he was so screwed up in the head oh uh, from what the hundred uh psycho patients right. fucking his Be- mother yeah a oh. hundred hundred uh, hundred Part maniacs three. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. son out. of a hundred maniacs then upon his death he was granted this dream walking ability yeah by those but they also the touch they on potential background and dream master in part four yeah um you know the uh that, that's always existed you know the you, you have you know the darkness and then you have the light you yeah. know the, the dream you know the guardians of the gates um and freddie inherited the guardian of the, the dark gate so that was different if you want to say it that's on you i gotta call it even man i got fucked up for dropping a bottle cap before we already fucked up ron over here for just for a crinkle okay i gotta call, i gotta call a punishment my man all in favor why are you looking at me you vote first no we vote together yeah we vote together all in favor say aye 
I honestly have to take a second. Nay. Nay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that was an accident. That, that, that crinkle the bag is was worse. a conscious move. Yeah, because we've had many shows where you heard like a crinkle. It wasn't anything good. You. It's just got to be I fair. Wasn't I wasn't mean, thinking vote, it was yeah. anything personal. <laughs> yeah, your vote failed, so. <laughs> I guess he was trying to be fair. So. There could be a lot of punishment yeah. shots in your episode here. I'm fine with that. Yeah, I yeah! figured you would. Uh, what, what, what do I want? Pick something yummy? What'd yep. You... Okay. Oh, you got lucky. You that, got lucky. The, the way the wheel spins. Yep. <laughs> Why couldn't I land on that fucker? Because you <laughs> suck. You did. Not in this episode. No. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, God. Oh, forbid you don't get fucking <laughs> oh, what you want in every episode. So, All right. Go ahead. Uh, in, the, in I will say, in Craven's original draft, uh, Kruger was, was a molester and a child killer. But they they yeah. didn't really push for the molester. Because that kind of kind of went away. I forget what news story broke at the time. They were just getting ready to start filming, but it, it was something to do with some child molestation. And they were like, "Yep, nope, yeah. nope, <laughs> nope." Hitting a little bit too close to home. Nope, we aren't doing this. Nope. Well, uh, the fact he that he is just going to be a killer, yeah. a child killer. That's that's plenty enough. <laughs> Let's not make him that evil. Uh, so you having a shot at Bailey's? All right. Okay. Uh, so they removed any direct reference to molestation, just straight child killing. Uh, and, you know, like I said, he gets and they went live. The, they went the complete opposite in the remake, too. Yeah, they did. They did. Like The they remake away, really they touched on the, the pedophilia, killing. like, more than anything out of all yeah. the movies. And yeah. I, I hated it. I, I thought the movie sucked. It was the only movie that hit pedophilia. Yeah. Yeah, I was the only one that had pedophilia. That nailed it on the head. Yeah. yeah. So they uh, went ahead and, you know, it's a child killer seeking revenge on the children of the parents who fucking torched his ass alive. Uh, which, to me, that's great motivation. It really is. Yeah. You know, the, the, the hatred and not going after the people who did it. Fuck it. I'm going to make you feel even more pain by taking your fucking kids away. Well, uh, sir, well, he did it. I think they did it right in going after the kids with his character, though. Yes. Especially, you know, because he was a child killer. Yes. So there's no point of going after you. Exactly. You know, go yeah. after your kids and yep. I'm gonna, for and, it. And thereby, I punish you for yeah. what you did to me. Exactly. Uh, and, and it helps uh, yeah. so him. him great motivation. Person. Wonderful motivation. Jason, as much as a great killer he is. The fact that his motivation is his mother. Yeah, but it, it was, all right, I want to, you know, seek revenge because these fuckers were doing drugs and having sex, you know, while I drowned. He's no longer taking revenge on the people who did him wrong. He's just yeah. taking revenge on any random fucking, you know, teen that is breaking the... the he the, kills anybody who's sense. in front of him. He they're, they're, He's got no mercy for anybody. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, well, what if, what about the kids of the people that were supposed to be watching yeah, no, that, 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 i would understand the motivation there i right. would but if that's not what he does that could have been that could have been cool yeah it would, it would, absolutely uh, it, but the, but it would have fell, fell in the same premise though as freddie exactly yeah. so i, I, I think it, you actually had understood the motivation of of freddie uh may not have agreed but you understood it yeah all right you can you can empathize at least you don't agree with, with the makeup yeah in some of them no i can understand that i can but also once again you gotta think about uh and one and two how low budget they were yeah but they looked fucking great though yeah they really did they did but and but, uh which one was it but they also think about how short period of times one and two how short a period of times he was shown on screen so they didn't have to drop a lot of money for no they you know, didn't they didn't have to drop yeah. a lot of money on them but all right, so one and two, one, two, and three, he looked good. Four, they, I think they started to progress a little bit more in the makeup for Freddy. And then five, the same. Six, I think it was. Six is Freddy's dead. Yeah. Seven is what, uh, Freddy's New Nightmare. Freddy's dead is when his makeup sucked fucking homeless asshole. Whoa. So I mean, I, I, I mean he's got a point. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not going to. It gonna... looked like a really good fucking mask that you could put over your face. It's because they had have to everything blended because how much time a uh, screen time, uh, Robert England was going to be having. They had to 
basically mass produce the the prosthetics that he was going to be wearing in order to keep continuity, which it, thereby you were going to have a fakeness to it. Yeah, well, so you, you, well, you could see the rubber. Yeah, and, and, you and, see and, oh no, you can see it in the back. You can see it in the yeah, back. Yeah, yeah but yeah. it's because of the uh, of them having to be able to guarantee the 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 same look from scene to scene to scene to yeah, scene. Yeah, I've, I've, I I have a Halloween mask yeah. at the house that is similar. That I could spritz with water, it'll look a lot fucking better than his. Yeah, it looked extremely fucking dry. Well, see, that's the thing I like about the first one is because the first one has a lot of him being in the shadows and darkness that you barely see his face. Yeah, but you, even when you see it though, it looks real. No, I I thought it he looked the best in the first one. He looked more creepier in the first one. The other ones he looked more comedic. It's even moist. Yeah, you yeah. know, it has the the glisten of yep. some sort of. Uh, but you can tell it looks like latex in the further ones. It looks more like a latex mask. Yeah. Yeah. But the last one looked fucking cool. Yeah. In um Which Nightmare. one? Huh? New, New Nightmare? Nightmare. Well, yeah. New Nightmare was like if, a completely different take on it. Like it was no, it was. It was completely different. It, it didn't even cool. look like a burn face. It looked more like a just a weird looking demon. A burn, bone, and flesh. Yeah. You know, that's what it was yeah, but it was like perfectly set. It wasn't like all messed up and, that's and because mangled. It was, it, it, that's what it was going for. It wasn't Yeah the freddy krueger the burn victim it was the idea of fear itself that is being contained by the stories you know and the demon that is caught in this and has now embodied you know the idea and yeah. he, he fell in love with the character and it, it was cool is that they developed yeah. more throughout this th- throughout yes. the movies you know but i think like i think four and five they really fell off there's reasons for that. In a, I'm sure there are. Yeah. You know, especially with um, the on-screen kills. Yeah. You, there's there's you, reasons for that. You don't see anything, which is completely fucking different than his predecessors yeah. and... Pro- predecessors? Protégé? No, predecessors. Pro- predecessors pre, pro would be after, so... Pro- okay. Decisors. Followers? Well, let's... No, okay. I'm, Fuck you, man. 50 cent word, all right? I'm just, well, I'm just trying to help you out. Film's done. Movie comes out. Blockbuster. Yeah. Bam. Immediately, New Line picks up the phone, tells Wes, we want another one. Wes is like, nope, I'm good. I'm I'm good. Because when part of the deal, and it was very common, especially at that time, uh, you know, signing, he, basically, he signed over all rights to, to the franchise, to the character, everything, to New Line. After one movie? Yeah, that that, that was common at the time. Uh, a lot of creators, you know, they, they, they were basically, you know, this is what it is. This is standard pro- operating procedure. Okay. All right, you know, we're the ones putting the money out, so we're going to be the ones owning the rights to it, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. Mm. You know, it's our money. Um, well, the same thing happened to Friday the 13th. Yeah, Sean Cunningham exactly. with the first, and then it was a whole bunch of different directors. He, so, Wes Craven, you know, uh, he's like, nope, I'm good. I, I, I'm good right now. Um, and, like, okay, fine, fuck it. We're going to go ahead and make another one uh, without your fucking input mm. whatsoever. And then we got Nightmare on Elm Street Part D. Released November 1st, 1985, directed by Jack Shoulder. Yes. It's uh, fucking year after. Yeah. Oh, they they busted these it out was quick. Rushed. No, yeah, they were they were they all, all were. Well, so yeah. well, all right. So what's the about production it, the first time? Though? Seven the the first seven films were released in a decade. Yeah. All right, and that includes a writer's strike happening yeah. while that's going on. You know, that was during part decade. four, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, we'll you know, we'll address that when we get to part four. But how quickly they're churning these fucking films out? So uh, I mean, so they would have to have been talking about making no. the other ones no not while they're even making the next ones no they, that the, the short turnaround is like literally all right cool all right cool this one's doing good green light next one write me a fucking script let's start filming fuck like what two months later yeah it's done yeah <laughs> that's what and they were also producing films a lot quicker than we are now used to filming you know you know taking six nine months you know and so the film nope three four yeah, fucking years like, oh, yeah they're like nope all right let's go ahead and fucking yeah well know, that, that was typical for horror boom. movies a month no, later yeah. all right let's go ahead and get on location let's start filming boom all right it's fucking uh, uh three weeks later we're done with the primary filming 
Boom. All right, let's go ahead and get it in fucking, you know, post effects and fucking editing. It was fucking cutthroat back then. Yeah, Yo, you got to remember, Friday the 13th was, uh, yeah. was uh, eight movies in the was, 80s. I'm sorry? The slasher era was cutthroat as shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, it was get it out as soon as possible so we can claim the raids to anything that was that's. Yeah, Similar. because the studio was making money. That's why. So the more money they were making, it was like, yeah, bust out another one. And we'll make it, we'll make more money and everything else. And these movies made money. Oh yeah, just like the Friday the Thirteenth uh, uh, saga made money. I mean, like I said, they had eight movies in the eighties before they got into the nineties, where yeah, it got not to all nine. Of them did. So they all did well. Before we start getting into, I wouldn't go. I wouldn't you know, the all. rest of the films. I have. A bonus drink. Ooh, I like bonuses. Yes. Nice. All right. And this is something we've actually uh, have all tried before. And it's delicious. And we all enjoyed. And because of how much I enjoyed this film, I had this bottle shipped up to me along with our Malort shipment. Uh, Celtic Honey. Yum, we, yum, this yum, is something yum. we did not. And, and I had sitting on my shelf for a while, and I was hoping to, you know, have it, you know, during a show before the first time we had it. And I, I think it was a July 4th party. Yep. All right, and I was like, you know what? Fuck it. No, I am bringing this. I'm tired of looking at this on my goddamn shelf. I want to try this so bad, and we killed that entire. Because I remember you were trying to figure out what what, what movie are we going to do that yes. for, and you just couldn't figure it out. No, I could not. Unless we no, you should have did that for Candyman. That would have been great for Candyman. It, it would have been, but like I said, and we I just didn't ever. No, no movie came up where it felt right for the film, and I just got annoyed. I was just sitting there and what? staring at it my shelf for oh, so long. Your words. Just, Give me my so shock. I decided to uh, go ahead and you know bring it for the july 4th party we killed that entire fucking bottle so delicious it is and ron's been nice enough it feels like it's been chilled already which we discovered during the party made it even better so i went ahead because of how much i love this film i decided to get us an all another you know bottle so here you go ragnar if you would like to start filling up some glasses for us okay now that we all got shots in front of us this is imported Celtic honey, Irish honey liqueur, crafted with all natural Irish honey and triple distilled Irish whiskey. Uh, it is a direct product of Ireland, uh, inspired by a honey mead recipe of the Irish Celtic tribes, believed to bring good luck. So everybody, let us enjoy. Absolutely. Skull, uh, motherfuckers. <sighs> Fuck me, fuck you. All right, let's go ahead and give a quick review. Two. 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 Crystal. 1.5. <laughs> oh. I thought you gave it two. I th- no, I've never had this before. <coughs> Her and Chase's voice. <laughs> was that you? I said no. No, no, you I thought, have. I thought you that was have. Crystal. I specifically remember pouring you in a red Solo cl- cup. Uh, a one ounce shot of this. That was not Fourth of July. That was something else. No, that was the Fourth of July party. That was the Fourth of July party huh. over at Ragnar's brother's house. Yes, I'm. Okay, so hold up. That whole night. Yes, you were. You don't remember. Exist. Yes, you were very. <laughs> you had a good time. Yes. Did I you did. lose a dab you pin did. there? I did. <laughs> you lost a dab pin at somebody's house? Yeah. That is unprofessional. It I, it fell out of my titty. What? How what? dare it? Not fell like out of my bra. Pocket. Fell out of my titty. Yeah. Titty pocket. <laughs> that's what that's what they call them. Okay. It's their it's their testicle pockets. Let's get to number two. Number dos. All right. So what does everybody think of number two? What is your first thinking when you're thinking about number two? If you had to, you know, describe it in five, six words, three, four words, which how do you remember, you know, differentiate nightmare two? Homosexuality. Okay. You said five words, right? Uh, Not well, syllables. There's a few words. There's a few know, words. No, like, starts out great, ends words. dumb. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Nothing against. I'm just saying it. it is. Pass me. I got to think a little bit. Okay, Ragnar. Hold on. Liquor's catching up with me. Feminine. Weird bromance. Very, Very weird. Okay. A little bit too weird. Nope. It was weird. They fucking hated each other, and then they're fucking boys. And what's what the fucking dude getting slapped in the ass with the fucking... The, hold, on. Uh, hold on. We haven't heard you. What? You don't remember that? No, don't. Yes. Hold on. Hold on. So, yeah. Uh, in five words, five words, or weird less. bromance, not bad. Okay. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so, what are you complaining about? He's Adam complaining about the gym teacher getting abused. The teacher in getting the abused in the fucking uh, shower. It's just keeping hey, on thing with his S&M interest. Yeah. 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 Okay. What about? Are it? you king shaming? I fucking hate it. 
He You're is, king shaming. He is. He's it a was piece of v- shit. And fucking the, the fucking main dude was just weird. I'm How was he eye. weird? I didn't like him. He would, I would say he's especially a when he's dancing in the fucking room in front of the uh, dancing in front of the uh, no, no no. I would say what, he's a shitty fucking human being. No, I did not dance in the but, room with a fuck. No, 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 not, not the coach, the, the main character. Character's not a shitty. The main he character. He was confused. Sorry, I was talk, thought you were talking exactly. about the coach. He was just confused. That's and he was with was. the dude, uh, uh, the dude that was in um, that was uh, weird science. Boy. That was yeah. his boy. Weird science. Little, that, that's what it was. Little that too, was his best friend. A little too close though. And whatever. My would you stay? Can you stay with me while I sleep? No, what the, seriously? Are, are are you are we friends? Are we bros? Would, would you stay with me while I'm sleeping? Are, are we, we bros? Are do we you friends? need it? We're friends. Okay, I'm Everyone not going to ask you to you sleep with me. Each other enough to do that. He, he wasn't asking to cuddle I'm with him. Not, not, I didn't say cuddle, but chill here. I'm not. You know, I, I I'm sleep with my you, mind Ron. is fucked right now. You I didn't see say me I wanted you to sleep with me. You just asked me, would you sleep with me? No, that's not what I meant. But that's what you fucking said. But that's what he said. Would you stay with me while I sleep? I'm sorry. No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Right, he came can't... fucking barging into his room. I would never Hysterical. ask another guy to stay in the room with me and watch me sleep. All right. So if, if you are going through such horrible nightmares. Yeah, bro. All right. I, I would do that for any one of y'all. I, I absolutely would. I would be looking out for you. You know, at, we're all family and shit like that. I would no, Ron. I, I swear to God, if yeah. you if you are suffering from horrible fucking nightmares, you just you watch your mother get burned me, alive in front of you. You're, you're, you're making me feel like the biggest asshole. I whatsoever. Like four fucking days. If, if can you can you just look over me? If I start having a fucking nightmare, wake my ass up. It's, all right, I, you, you got it, boy. I'm course. there. I am there. Asked. Take the sleep demon out of it, okay? Say, for example, you have a hit out on you and you need to keep your shit hidden. Would you expect these two di- guys to turn your ass around at the door and say, no, go somewhere else? <sighs> okay. My five-word review of Nightmare 2 would be waste of Freddy's coolest power. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. That would, what that Nightmare 2 introduced. That's really fucking good. Yes. I, the fact of him oh, being God. able to infect and reborn himself into the real world is such a <laughs> you know he cruel tried concept. So hard. He tried really fucking he did. hard. He absolutely did, and he almost succeeded. Yeah, a lot of people had problems with seeing Freddy, the pool scene. I will go with the pool scene, you know, okay. at the pool party and shit like that. Yeah. You know, in the, so, in the right, real so world and just both. fucking people up left and right. So right. was that actually Freddy? That was Freddy or a slash. That, that was both of them combined. Yeah. So he was controlling so one, him. So which one are they seeing? They're, they seeing, they're, seeing, they're seeing him. They're seeing the, the, the guy. Yeah. So they're, right. they're, they're seeing, seeing the, the main the, character. The, yeah. yeah, but in All cinematic right. form, it's Freddy. But when, but it's but they showed us Freddy because Freddy's in control. Yes. But they are seeing the main character just wrecking shit. Yes. Think of Jason goes to hell. Exactly. Uh, Jason goes to hell when it's yeah. uh, it, you see Jason, but it's not Jason. It's actually the. Uh, the, the the person that Jason is taking because you, especially when you see anybody in the mirror you see Jason Voorhees but it's yeah. really the person that Jason is taking the form of of somebody else like basically jumping in different body to body and body yeah but it was creative it, I will say it was this super creative and then making the final girl a guy was super fucking creative because no, yeah no, I think that was the only one too if you so think- normal in a lot of fucking slashers it's always a female yeah exactly for some reason or another. And th- you know what? That's what I never understood is that in a lot of fucking horror slasher flicks, you always they the director, writer, whoever, they always choose a female. It, you know, to, uh, the weak conquering the strong. That, yeah, it, it's the overcoming. But it, it's the it, inherent. It's fucking redundant, man. It is. It is. That's it why really I is. give credit to Nightmare Two for bringing in the the realistically. The first male scream queen. Yeah, and All I will right. say this: the the scene where uh, Freddie is like jumping out of him, yeah, and basically he's t- b- tearing his body apart and just coming out of him. That was a cool scene. I will, I will say this: it I really will love was, that. Yeah, the entire thing that w- them really, really fucking with the, the 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 fire motif, the way they did, you know, him, you know, going through his dreams, him always being hot and sweaty, shit melting and stuff like that. Yeah, really, really w- fit well. Uh, now, a lot of people Did say this was purposely written together. to promote um, oh, no. promote 
uh, homosexual yeah. tones and stuff like that. Uh, the, what the, the fuck main... did I just miss? I don't know. Sorry, Ragnar was over here like, I did not put two and two together on that. Yeah. Hmm. And I'm like, Aww. No, and Freddy too, when, all right, so look, all right, he, he's in his room, and he's perpetually sweating every night. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. And he's, he's waking like, up every about morning heat. complaining about yeah. the heat. Yes. Okay. And I literally just now I didn't put two and two together. Of, that he died burning alive. He was today years old. No, not that he died burning alive, it, but that Freddy is getting into his body. Yes. The entire movie and causing all that heat. Yes. Yeah. Slowly but surely, Freddy is building up in his body. Exactly. So I only saw that as, you know, Freddie's influence on the house because that's where he fucking. No, that no. was that was he him. Was everywhere. Yeah. Well, no, because they were saying the whole family was saying, like, you know, it's a hundred and ten degrees in here, and then they're, they're birds. They would later. Fire. No, they, they, they in, in that one scene they they, they addressed that. They had been saying that's no, been no, an no, issue no, for they, a while. No, no, I'll look at the uh, AC, but they weren't fucking sweaty. They weren't fucking miserable and yeah. shit like that. No, his until- his mother said the day the uh, two days before that uh, that issue with the bird catching on fire. Which I'm still baffled about. Um, okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of, I ain't gonna lie, it was corny, but I was kind of like, I really appreciated that that scene, though. Yeah. <laughs> like two days before that, she was saying, "Honey, I've told you, it's so hot upstairs." Like they yeah, know there's an issue. Yeah, but that's, he recognizes the AC's fucked. But I'm also sitting here thinking, Freddie's done fucked with that AC. Yeah, but there's yeah. a difference to, between. Your AC being screwed and, and having you sweating him, your balls yeah, off, and having him sweat perpetually off him. like fire fucking yeah. Burning you, every scene that almost every single scene the main actor is in, he's moist, he's damp, he's he's, moist. he's sweating Blazed. balls. Yes. a lot of moistness. All right, yeah, is going on with that <laughs> yeah. dude. So uh, right. everybody wanted to give that credit. motherfucker um, doesn't even sweat that fucking much when he's getting his ass kicked by his coach, yeah. bro. All right, that scene when no, they're he like sweated a lot during that shit. Yeah, Not no. The, no, he oh, sweated throughout the whole they're, fucking movie. They're fucking doing the the fucking you know yeah, the oh, yeah, wait, yeah when, when they're, they're doing, supposed to be doing the push ups. Oh my goodness. That was fucking a beautiful, uh, absolutely beautiful scene too. Like, so uh, it's not. But personal, also, right? when he was, uh, you know, kind of halfway uh, sleepwalking, and it ends up at that fucking gay bar and shit like that, he was still fucking sweaty and moist and shit like that and damp as fuck. Well, that's because it was Wait. raining outside. But it, once again, it maintained the that moistness that. Yeah, when he ended up in the fucking the the leather bar where he ran into Dude, the, was, the coach, it was and super the coach hot. Took him back to the gym. Oh, who the, makes him run? Well, and you, then the coach gets killed. Stu, you got to think okay, so I, that no, was the no, same that, night that the bird I caught on fire. That section right there. Yeah, yeah. He was just kind of wandering and shit like that, and he ends up in this bar. Yeah. All right, and it's. It's heavily implied as okay. a gay bar without saying it's a no, gay bar. No, no, it's an no, S&M club. They said that. But it's also heavily implied it's more for the homosexuals. Except yeah, especially when he's wearing the fucking leather. that are heterosexual in, yes, the, in the bar. but you also see about 90% men in that bar. And yeah. Well, that's because men are horn dogs. Like All right, you only see 90% yeah. men in yeah. that fucking bar. But still. All right, and then you also still, that do see the same some night. trannies in that fucking bar. You do I did see, not notice. Yeah, if you pay attention, there are some very masculine-looking women in that fucking bar. Yeah. Very masculine local woman uh, yeah. in that bar, as well as the the normal, quote unquote, woman. So uh, either way, this is the same night as the bird catching on fire. Yes. It then starts raining outside. So he's super hot because it was but hot enough again, to ignite maintains, a bird. <laughs> but it, it maintains the, 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 the constant wetness that the main character has. Right. He goes Moistness. walking... Out in the rain. I know. He but, shows up at the bar, still, and the next route, next scene you see, he's in the yeah. shower. He goes, of course he's going to be no, no, the next moist. Thing you see, you, the next thing you see is him running the uh, the laps around the gym. Okay, so he just got out of the rain. After now he's sweating running, on top of yes. it. Yes. So what, it maintains that the, 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 the sweatiness, the, the dampness, you, you the were, heat. You were implying that it was unfounded moistness. No, I'm not implying that. I'm, fine. I'm, I'm implying that it. Oh no, that, that is absolute Kruger influence. Right yeah, how, how long were you him. talking about being wet? Seriously, this is yeah. like 20 minutes of wetness. So wet. Kruger's no, influence seven, seven upon of his body is, yeah. has okay. raised his temperature. It's all right. You 
Oh. Uh, see, the thing is, it included like a, a trigger was, warning for moist. No, no. See, the thing is, with, <laughs> it was creative. Goddamn trigger warnings. It right? was creative. That's the thing. It was creative, but it was my least favorite of the way that they did the movie. Okay, a lot of people they even made a documentary about the impact in the homosexual community that that Nightmare Two, you know, had. They felt that it was really. It, yeah, they did. They they truly felt that this was a thinly veiled uh movie about you know uh fighting being being in the closet and the feelings that they they may go through yes the main actor ended up he is a homosexual he is now out of the now out of the closet you know homosexual at the time he oh, wasn't really oh yeah he, like in he, real life yeah in real life oh no shit yeah well oh, uh okay. mark somebody i forgot i'm blanking on his name um but uh no he uh is out of the closet and he the, the writers have now recently come out and said, oh, yeah, we absolutely did that on purpose. But at first, when they were questioned... Fucking lying asses. Yeah, they're like, no. <laughs> no. Well, no, the I, director I, was also gay. Yeah, but uh, but at, at the time, everyone oh. was saying, no, this is not okay. what we're trying to do. I think it was a comedy of errors that made it come out. They were absolutely trying to be scary, but somehow they ended up with a lot of homosexual undertones all right so in spite of what they were trying to do it just was a comedy of errors everything that's lined up is like yeah it's kind of fucking weird (laughs) all right so how how exactly can you claim that all right so this is 84 okay the coach so this was 85 yeah right all right years later whatever you want to call it how exactly can you claim that we did this on purpose because they're trying to, because it was accepted as almost a homosexual rallying cry about the suffering and the pain and the fear it they go through while feeling the still, need to live in the closet. Yeah, but it, it was accepted and interpreted that way. Okay, but they didn't make it. No. They that, didn't make it out exactly. to be accepted. Th- so. That's what... Well, that that my how our argument is is this accepted as this homosexual rallying cry when I don't believe that's what they wrote it for. I believe they wrote it for, to be just try to be something different. I think you know, a lot of people and, took and, you know, it and they they saw all this stuff and oh oh yeah that's what we were trying to well, do. Takes, yeah, but then they changed it completely when it came to round three. Yes. Yeah, uh, but I, I think that's what the the writers, director, and the actor were trying to push for is in in, in twenty twenty hindsight. So, you know, Monday morning quarterback. You know, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what we were trying. Instead of just admitting, oh no, we what we were trying came out this way. So this is not at all what we were aiming for in any way, shape, or form. What about this? We're sorry. <laughs> what about this idea then? All right, so Nightmare One, mm-hmm. right? You want you know that Freddy is a child killer. Yes. Okay. Nightmare Two, he's still a child killer. Yes. Okay, but, but he's a th- child killer that is now trying to regain his control and influence in the real world. Yeah. Well, this is gonna be a completely one eighty of a question, though, in reference to the remake. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. okay. All right. And this is 20, 30 years later is that the remake happened. So in number two, you have the coach and he has this little stigma around the locker room of being gay and liking the 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 boys that are in his fucking See, locker. Room. I don't think he ever. T- they, they, okay. None of them were actually ever taking it as him being a homosexual. I think they all took him as being a masochist, somebody who enjoys watching, sadist. A sadist. You're right. Sadist. You're right. You're right. Masochists enjoy being punished. Straight. Sadists enjoy watching other people being punished. Yes. Well, didn't... They, they took him as a sadist but who they... got off on other watching other people suffering. Yes, but with that. They also brought in the the high school age uh, kids into the locker room for it. But I don't think that it was ever purposely being painted as the, the you, child, you the think high it school just age. Happened to yeah, that, it, be if, if you try to load? rewind your mind to 
that era and stuff like that. It's also uh, totally uh, different than what it is Exactly. Now. It wasn't... It was a lot more accepted back in the 80s of, uh, let's say, a a 30-year-old hooking up with a 17-year-old. It was accepted yeah. without being necessarily looked down upon uh, as being fucking creepy or, you know, even a 16-year-old, you know, it, it wasn't necessarily, it wasn't associated with being creepy at the time. Yeah. That's what was being accepted. So I don't believe they were shooting it and writing it from the point of view as you know uh a, a, an adult male getting off on a child being well, it's not, well, well it was I'm, being, I'm not trying to say uh, as far as like being like the the extreme creep factor yeah more or less the, the borderline i they were they're writing it as he was getting off uh, on the the power dynamic that he held over other people I can not see necessarily that. You know, males, females, whatever, just the, the power yeah. alone. Well, and be able to create tension and punishment to those people. Yeah. Well, when they're in the scene where they're having to do the like planks or whatever the fuck it is they're doing in the baseball field, his buddy, I can't remember his name, but his buddy tells him that he likes, specifically likes little boys like you. But he's. Pretty boys. Kinda, pretty boys, there you yeah. Go. He's kind of talking shit as far as because he's uh, messing with. Yeah, we all know, right you know, there, gym teachers and shit like that, or, or we all know people and stuff like that. We would talk shit about, yeah, yeah. And it was the normal, you know, bullshit talking, you know. Oh yeah, he likes pretty boys like you, and so like it. it but it, it was also yeah, he's a real fucking asshole. He just likes to fucking see a sweat, you know. It, it was that mentality. I don't, I don't think it was purposely. You know, knowingly written as a, a a gay anthem, it was something that was adopted as a gay anthem. Yeah. That the writers and the director and the actor turned around later on, saying, "Oh, oh yeah, that's why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We totally did that on purpose. Um, yeah, yeah <laughs> that's what yeah. we were aiming for. When when it uh, wasn't at all. They they thought they were doing something, you know, just different and creative and stuff like that. That then got recognized in a certain way and they're trying to take credit for it because if you think about it, the director the actor uh the writers none of them really hit any major major level of fame afterwards so they're just writing the curtails uh no uh, no that's not true the actor the uh, the best friend actually oh, was yeah, in best a lot of West Weird Science. He was also yeah, in. No, okay, Vamp. but he, I think he already did Weird Science prior to this, didn't he? No, but 1985. Well, he also did Vamp. Okay, but once again, it, it wasn't anything major. Now that you know, in the beginning, in the early times, they yeah, were all yeah, denying yeah. any homosexual allocation until after years later, they're like, "Oh yeah, we did that on purpose." That wasn't what they were going. I honestly, in my heart, don't believe that's what they were aiming for. That's something that was. I think it was a, no. I, I think it was the director's choice because director, I don't think it was. No, I, I think it was. I don't think it was. I think think that was them trying to be different and i'm gonna have to go with stew on this yeah man. It, it, it just now the, they, the they're documentary like, okay, this the documentary all, tells different because the, the director even talked about it yeah now still, yeah, afterwards still claiming. but you you anything that we question about during that you know relatively recent time frame when it was released he's like no that's not at all what we're going i, I know but no, all, no, the, all, no, the, no. all the actors denying talked about it, how that was like it. yeah this is kind of you know yeah afterwards yeah, years later at, yeah that's true when that's they true. when they did not actually have but i, I have a, a feeling even when they were filming the so movie no, they were thinking not, themselves we're gonna rely on just this one last this one thing to kind of keep us going to the cons to try to get paid and keep us in the the public relevance this is what we're gonna go ahead and say we were oh yeah we were doing it on purpose in order to keep getting fucking booked right that, that's what it is i i in my heart i feel that's what we're doing and i have no problem with the with, with the gay community you know, accepting this and being able to relate to it, you know, as yeah, there's no judgment at all. It. I have no issue with that whatsoever because I can but see it, where but it, it felt, but it, it felt from. very out of place out of all of the other films. But it was different, and I give them credit for that. I, 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 I could respect that. Different. I could respect that. It was something different. You know, a lot of things they do the things the same. Yeah. They always do like a copycat, the same thing over and over again, and they did something different. Okay, so part two. You know, we we talked about uh, the different influences they had, what it's been accepted as, whether it was purposeful or not. Uh, you know, Kruger. So was it a stepdad? As far as what? Jesse's dad. No, that was, no. Or was he just a dickhead? Jesse's dad, the, the main character. Yeah. No, I honestly feel that Jesse's family was the most loving, caring family of 
any of the main characters in the entire uh, franchise. Hmm. They were the. I would. You know what? I would. I yeah. Okay. All right. Especially considering uh, when you have Heather, who played Nancy. Yeah. Her dad was the cop. Yep. And her mom was your like, you know, you're on something. So, you know, what the fuck is going on? Yep. You know, and th- throughout the entire films, it was the, 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 the draw of it was the, the teen angst through loneliness feeling. Nobody understands them. Nobody can, can believe what they're actually going through and dealing with. And simply that's why none of the adults mm-hmm. quote unquote are there to protect them and stuff like that. It, you know, except for in part two, his, his family was the most well-adjusted of what are you fucking them. doing over there, dude? Are you cool. trying to get another fucking punishment shot? Seriously. No, he's being very gentle. loud. I don't hear anything. <laughs> I could. All right, go ahead. Uh, so I, I feel that his Arnie. parents were the most well adjusted and, uh, uh, you know, the, created the most stable home life in any of the main characters. Yeah. Uh, so the fact that you're, you're, you're trying to question whether it was stepdad level or not, I don't think that was the case. I, I don't know, and even if he was stepdad in number two, yeah, no, I don't think I don't, I don't, I don't. And even if it was a stepdad, it was one of those stepdads that are actually loving, accepting, and treating the child as their own. Even if that was the case, yeah, Uh, I, I don't feel that was just you know him, you know, being the dad figure, you know, talking, you know, working and stuff like that, and then oh, I know you're just being an asshole. You're just trying to fuck with me. You put a fuck a damn, you know, goddamn M eighty up at that fucking bird's ass. But it wasn't even like he was punishing or just losing his shit. Even when he was yelling at him to basically, uh, you know, unpack the room or punishing him to unpack the room. It was, he gave him multiple fucking chances before he finally drew the line. Like, All right, nope, nope, you're not going out till you fucking, you, you do what you're no, supposed my, to No, my point was on the, you know, the obvious bullshit, like trying to th- say he put a fucking M80 in the bird. That was him just trying to fucking figure anything out because how fucking weird that whole experience was. I didn't see it as that. He was trying. Okay, I'm sorry. If one I, bird so of get, mine kills another bird and then blows up, I am <laughs> going to be freaked the fuck out. Yeah. And I'm going to be looking so for So you're going to find complete conviction in your accusation of a kid? It, uh, as far as trying to get up to Or uh, what the fuck happened here? I can blame my teenage son for fucking up a lot more than trying to blame a ghost <laughs> all right yeah I, just to, in order to try to make sense in my mind that, or how that, about that, no, no, you know right. an m80 that's would probably have killed this fucking parakeet if somebody shoved it up its ass so once again i am i am tr- <laughs> rather than accepting some child killer has now possessed my my fucking teenage son's body uh and is now trying to come out like from at the, the dream least world. i'd be like like, you know what? <laughs> like, nope. Maybe I should M-80. probably fix the AC. <laughs> he tried. He fucking tried. He wasn't gonna pay some motherfucker. <laughs> he was trying to fucking save a dollar. Yeah, All but right? that's a that that yeah. there even nowadays too though. Like that dad there is a typical. He would be a typical fucking eighties, seventies, eighties dad. Yeah, no, you're you right. No, he really is. He's the one that is gonna like he. He can either fix it or he can't, but he'll figure out some way to fix it. Exactly. You yeah. know, that's why I, I had no problem. And I, I really thought it was cool because of showing, you know, change, once again, changing the dichotomy of, you know, stereotypical, you know, teenage, you know, films, slasher films, where, no, they actually come from a, you know, a loving family. Yeah. A family that actually cares about you, listens to you, and, it, you know, cares about what you're going through. Instead um, of the broken down. Yeah. No, they they they, the they just the completely time. changed it all on the set, like, like Nancy's mother. Yeah, exactly, and, and father. They just have a weird way of showing it. Yeah, like I'm not I'm not gonna lie. You're sitting here describing like the 70s and 80s father, and I'm saying you're like I was born in 99, but that describes my dad. For fuck's no. sake! No, anyway, I'm still I I I, God, I, I really? I'm yeah. similar. Jeez. I will say. Do well, you guys forget this every time? I was. <laughs> I do raising. I do. So I'm fuck, apparently I'm old. I. Yeah. I I, I was enjoying the fact that I was able to introduce my oldest son uh, to these films. We rewatched the first seven of these films together this weekend. Yeah, and you uh, said that he liked the one that you yes, were really yes, shocked about. Yes, and I had to. But 
also just rewatching it, you know, seeing the joy and the uh, the weirdness on his face as different stuff happens because the first time experiencing it, it, it made me relive my own youth. And then the some of the comments he made and shit like that, some of the jokes he made, I'm like, yep, I made those same exact fucking jokes. <laughs> this little fucking asshole, I love him. He's definitely my son. Shit, our my youngest. I would watch him. I was watching him all week, and he would fall asleep to watching That's every great. single fucking one of because I'd watch him at night. Yeah, you know because fucking they're done at school and dinner's done, time to relax or yep. whatever. You know, so I'd get, you know, one or two Freddy movies in. He would sit there and watch them. He'd fall asleep watching these movies. Yeah. How old is he again? He's four. I was six, and I would throw full-on tantrums unless my mom would put the haunting back on. (laughs) So you're you're setting up for a great kid. Oh, I know. He's going to be a fucking awesome kid. Uh, yay! When he gets up, serial killers. And you're Uh, going to be Hey, Hey, it's okay. That's fine. I'll support him in whatever he does. <laughs> Including zero killing. I'll support him in whatever he does. <laughs> All right. So we go into the, we're going into the uh, farming the thir- yeah. We're going into the third movie. So now we're going to go have a pig. into Dream Warriors. But he died. At least February 27th, 1987, directed by Chuck Russell. So other movies that Chuck Russell has done is the uh, 1988 remake of The Blob, which I fucking love. And he also did the uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger movie Eraser. And uh, shit, you guys remember The Scorpion King. That was another good one. He also did your mom. (laughs) And this is also the reintroduction of Wes Craven back in influence. Wes Craven's influence back into the Nightmare series. He did The Mask. Not Wes Craven. You're talking about the no Chuck director. Russell. Yes, he did the mask. Yeah, that's you when you say. introduced that. When I'm talking about Wes Craven, you're, he did the mask. I'm like, no, he didn't. Well, wouldn't it have been better <laughs> yeah. though if he did? Oh yes, yes. It would have been a lot better. It would. It would have been so much better. Oh shit! Chuck so Russell would. might be coming into our top three if we ever do the Blob. Don't he would Hall of Famer. Don't yeah, and that's our future episode with yep. the Blob versus Blob remake. Yep, uh, that would make him a Hall of Famer. Yep. So, uh, Dream Warriors. Dream Warriors. Not too bad. You know, moves on. And one question my oldest son it kept trying to follow along with is the time frame okay. that all this shit is happening. I'm like, okay, it these movies are being released basically year after year. Yep. But they specifically say part two is like five years after part one. And then uh when they introduce three they have nancy she's already gone you know finished high school she's finished you know her bachelor's she's degree. a therapist isn't she's she? working on yes. her master's degree at this point she's um doing she's, intern. She, yeah she's a intern. you know postgraduate student at the time working on her internship i'm like all right so mathematically then you got to say this is at least a couple years after part two mathematically it's at uh, least Five. Yeah, because she wasn't even. Nah, I wouldn't say she was unless, a senior in the well, in part one. Sm- well, well, so that's of the high thing. School. Unless you're smart enough, yeah, you know, then you can pull off your bachelor's in two, pull off your master's in three. So that's five minimum. But those are the rare. That's what I'm saying. Those well, are yeah, super rare. If you if she is smart enough to do yeah, it, that's why I'm saying it's at least a, a, a couple years, realistically, after part two. Yeah. All right. Um. So, so I'm like, all right, so we know, you know, it specifically states it's five years after part one and when part two happens. Yep. All right, so let's go ahead and add a couple years to uh, the, the time frame between uh, two and three. Let's add a couple years. All right, so uh, Dream Warriors. Uh, the premise of it is you got a handful of kids who have all attempted suicide in one form or another. Um, Did they? they? Yeah, they did. Yeah. Every last one of them. Did they? Yeah, every last one of them. Okay. Yeah, they were trouble. No, kids. no, no. I'm, I'm yeah. literally. No, they I'm did. not they questioning. Did. I'm asking. Yeah, they did. Um, you had uh, the junkie chick. Yeah. You know, so you could say or her ODs may have been an attempt for okay. you know that. You had the wheelchair dude who jumped off stuff, and that's why he ended up in the wheelchair. The wizard. Mm-hmm. All right. You had um, uh, the TV. You know, obsessed shit yeah. with the burns and stuff like that, who had supposedly taken some pills. Um, time, bitch. Exactly. <laughs> um, you had the, the the puppet dude who had scars on his on his wrists. Yeah. All okay. Right. Uh, 
So I mean, every last one of them, you know, had one point or another attempted something, and they ended up in the 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 asylum, you know, for their own protection. Did they? All right. So did did they attempt it because of Freddie, or did they attempt? That's what it? you find out later on is it was Freddie influencing uh-huh. the their you know through their dreams, their actions. Yeah. All right. They just mentally could not handle the the nightmares yeah. scenarios uh yeah. and they were i mean that's a lot to yeah they were, I, absolutely absolutely and they were the uh realistically the last children of elm street mm-hmm. or of the parents that you know did this to kruger these were the last you know the last surviving children that we knew of exactly um so uh freddy is fucking with them fucking with them fucking with them continues to fuck with them how does he not know? How does Kruger not yeah, know yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How how does how does Freddy Krueger not know who is left? Oh, Kruger knows who's left. And but also Kruger's power comes from the fear that he produces. All right, so after he initially was going on the murder spree, got it off and so like that, they ended up creating a nursery rhyme and spreading, yeah. basically spreading his tale, you know, through that. So, so future kids would still know uh, and be fearful of and the that would keep him alive. Exactly. Um, the so that gave him enough power to continue to hunt the children of the parents who did him, you know, mm-hmm. did him in. Uh, so that was what his focus, his focus, his focus. Eventually, he's starting to run out of people who know about him. Yeah. And that's addressed in later films and yes, shit like is. that. Because he gains his power through fear. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, But these are the, the last real surviving members of of elm street and of you know the 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 springwood the spring springwood ohio parents who killed kruger um and that's and uh, well well that's addressed in um five, no six six it spreads through all of springwood or five it, yeah six it spread it, all of springwood eventually learned and then he reaps his fucking goddamn palate you know clean he's yeah. like nope all right everybody yeah um but his f- primary focus in the earlier films are the, the the children of the parents who who killed him yeah which also nancy in one of the original drafts had a sibling who was killed by kruger really yeah they decided not to you know film that or they did film it they decided not to they deleted it, it. yeah well they talked about um uh, the mother during the scene where she's pulling out the glove from the uh, from the furnace, yeah, and telling us that she reveals that Nancy had an older sibling who was killed by Kruger, and she doesn't remember you know this older sibling because she was so young when the uh, the child was taken, um, and, and it put a whole other spin on the the Nancy. Uh, uh, that would have well, see, I like see that. this more as a trilogy when you think about this because the first one, the third one, and Wes Craven's New Nightmare Nightmare's, was a trilogy. Yeah, it is. It, because uh, it's all stars Nancy. Nancy. Yeah. Just like uh, Friday the 13th, it's uh, Tommy Jarvis. Yep. Uh, for the uh, part uh, four, part five, and then part six. And you know, Tommy was supposed to be included in the. Uh, Freddy versus or, Jason? Yep. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, there was well, there was like almost like 10 or 15 drafts yeah. of uh, Freddy one versus of the, Jason. Uh, up until very, very, very late, um, he was included. Uh, yeah, you know, in the uh, the filming, there, there was a lot of things I was very un- yeah. unhappy with that movie. But and the thing is, it also goes into uh, into debate on if that's a Freddy movie or if that's a Friday the Thirteenth movie. More Both. of which, it is. It's ab- I think it did a great job of. But a lot of people would argue that it's more both. of a Friday the Thirteenth movie. More, I mean, no, not more Friday the Thirteenth. Sorry, and more of a Nightmare on Elm Street movie than a Friday the Thirteenth movie. Just I, because Freddy's the one 50, behind 50. the strings, behind the scenes, pulling the strings and guiding Jason in the beginning, I think they did an they did a fair job they did a fair of walking that middle, making yeah. it a fifty fifty. Yeah, it was a fair. Yeah, um, and, and all the way to the end, you know, neither one won, neither one lost. Yeah, you know, that's what it was, and they did a great job of that. But back to part three. So this is where Freddy Krueger becomes Freddy fucking Krueger. Well, you see more of his um, 
his personality. Yes, he becomes the smart ass, and this is what uh, he's not the boogeyman yeah. anymore. He's more of the like the one liner, the the more personality, more of the showing what he really is and how the type of first person yep. he is. Because in the other ones, you really don't see that at all. You see him more of just like in the dark, in the shadows, more of a you know you don't see his lines. He's he's doesn't have any personality. He gets personality in Dream Warriors and above. Yep. It, it, it shows exactly, and that's why uh, when I was sitting there watching the films prior to I even started watching the first film with my oldest, yeah, um, and he said, you know, he had never seen any of them. I'm like, okay, but you know who Freddy Krueger is? He's like, yeah. I'm like, okay, tell me what you think Freddy Krueger is, and he's described as smart Alec, fucking you know, burn face killer, and she's like, who likes to you know fuck with his torment people and uh, shit like that, and he he, he always has one liners. So I'm like, okay. That's who you know who Freddy is. <laughs> all right. And I sit down, and as we're going to start the first one, I'm like, all right, the first two are not the Freddy that you are yeah. thinking. It is until part three that the Freddy that you are thinking really takes mm-hmm. hold. He's like, okay, okay, he's fine. He enjoyed the first two, absolutely, um, really enjoyed it. And then part three, after we're done, he's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I absolutely. This is you're absolutely right. This is the Freddy that I was picturing yeah. in my mind. Uh, it, for, and that's entered the cultural zeitgeist of somebody who had never seen a Freddy movie. Already was able to picture how Freddy was going to be was the character that was developed in Part Three. Compare it to Hellraiser because when you think of Hellraiser one and two, he were, Pinhead really wasn't a a big character in those movies he was more of a side character but then hellraiser 3 hell on earth yeah. which was the first one that i saw when i was younger that was actually the first hellraiser movie i saw and you get to see him actually play with the character and actually have fun with it that's how freddie was in dream warriors he got to have fun with it and play with his character a little bit more yep so so that's why i mean the kills were so much more creative and dream world based in part three than they were in the first two yeah the first two really showed you know the effects in reality of what may be happening in the dream world but part three really shows what's happening in the dream world is now affecting reality yeah and they, they had some good fucking deaths in part three. they did I mean, they had some uh, creative almost ones. every death was fucking amazing uh, yeah. you know they were iconic uh in the deaths you had you know welcome to prime time bitch uh you know that was death scene one. You had the marionette death one. scene. That was fucking amazing. You had Nancy sacrificing herself. Yeah. No, no, no. The best one was the um, the uh, fucking uh, girl, the junkie, and then putting yeah. the fucking uh, yeah, exactly the junkie the syringes you know, on his uh, fingers. Yeah. You know, uh, you know that the the the, Fran- the Freddy, you know, anti drug PSA. <laughs> right. Yeah, basically. <laughs> you know, it, it was very iconic, very memorable. Yep. You know every. Every death scene that happened was visually remarkable. It, it well, really see, was. I think that started it because then it got better and better and more creative through the more movies that they had. I mean, like you, you, when we get to four and five, when we start talking about those, I mean, the deaths just got more creative and they got more entertaining compared to when you think of the first movie and second movie. No, there were some really good deaths in four and five. I, even I though those movies, it's a general rule of thumb, but it you do see some more creativity. Are you drunk? You, you, yeah. you may see more creativity, but if you compare four and five death scenes to one, two, and three, you don't see anything. What are you talking about? Well, I, I I understand where he's coming from. I do, and we'll we'll address those. Yeah. And yeah. As well, once we hit four and five, we'll we'll, we'll address well, your Stu. Stu, you you, you came up with a good idea that uh, near the end of our show, we're going to be talking about our top five kills, and I'm yes. actually really really curious to hear everybody's yes. favorite kill. So that's going to be fun well, when yeah, we talk about that. Wait, your goddamn turn. What? What you do have you have to wait? I, I I know that. I was just preparing everybody for what we're going to be talking. Why why you give spoiler? Because I'm a Spoiler, dude. <laughs> what the you fuck? fucking douche. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Because I fuck so, up the show, as I always do. In three, we also learn more about Freddy's <laughs> background. Yeah. In three? Yes. Yes. All right. We learn. But then, then they extend it more origin. in four and five. Then they extend his. They do. Yeah. But we learn more about his human origin. Yeah. Yep. All right. And the nun and 
the nun being raped by a hundred fucking which, maniacs. Which, which was kind of cool. It kind of gives a exactly. little backstory. It does. To, and you do see, him. yeah, you do see Robert England playing one of the maniacs. Yes. You know, which I, uh, I always loved, you know, in part oh, he, two. He cameoed in all of his yeah. movies as a different character. Except other for than, in one. Uh, he did not cameo in one. No, no. But it, most yeah. of the other movies, especially as a fucking nurse. Yeah. Um, yeah. So in two, he was a bus driver. In three, he was... Uh, one of the maniacs and uh, one of the nurses. And four, he was. Hang on a second. Four was so slapdash and put together so last minute. Which, by the way, in two, I didn't. I didn't hit on this, but they didn't bring Robert Engel back at the beginning. They didn't. They they're like, fuck it. Why are we gonna pay this motherfucker? You know, he, he, all the other fucking major killers and shit like that. We can just fucking interchange anybody. All right, it doesn't matter who fucking plays them. They they brought back they they put somebody uh in the shower scene if you remember how weird he was walking that uh, would explain why yeah. he definitely looked fucking different yeah because it wasn't his robert face, england his face yeah. was more round yeah it wasn't robert england and how weird he was walking and yeah. that, it wasn't robert england uh. it was uh somebody else the beginning and robert england was like no i ain't coming back unless you pay me a little bit of fucking money yeah all right I'm no, that doesn't make sense. I made this fucking character. Fuck you. <laughs> All right, pay me. And plus, you have to sit up in this fucking yeah. makeup chair for like four or five hours. Yeah. And so, uh, shortly at the beginning of the filming, they like, all right, yeah, 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 we need him back. We need him back. He's fucking making it. Yes. Come back, Robert. Please. Please come back, Robert. This new line cinema's paycheck. <laughs> yeah. Um, so he came back and, uh, uh, and hence the, the establishment of Robert England as Freddy Krueger. Um, and then the only reason Wes Craven came back for part three is he renego- renegotiated his deal with New Line to actually start earning points off of every sequel. Yeah, but he came back as a writer and producer. Okay. He didn't yeah. come back as a as a director. Yeah, because remember, he had already signed off all his rights to uh, his property, his creative property. Right. He signed them all off to, yeah. New, uh, to New Line. And they're like, no, no, we'll go ahead. We'll give you some points on all fucking few, on all sequels. We'll give you some points. If you come back, give us some fucking input. You know, we we respect the fact that you created this guy. Let's hear some of your input. All right, let, let let's go ahead and hear where, what you want to do with this character. Yeah. And England was like, okay, or not England. Sorry, Wes Craven was like, yep. All right, cool, absolutely. I will gladly fucking goddamn come back in order to own. You know, re- once again get some money off of my character that I fucking created. Uh, oh, he's smart. Yeah. So he did. He came back. He threw some ideas. Um, it was going to be a lot darker of a tone than Dream Wars end up being. They took his generalized ideas and then lightened them up a little bit and made him more creative and more, uh, you know, smart assy yeah. than, than Robert England uh, originally had because Robert England's, f- I'm sorry, Wes Craven's first pitch on nightmare three was actually something very similar to what it was in new nightmare okay yeah very fucking similar of okay yeah these first two movies they literally came out you know as movies and then we have this fucking weird you know in reality this dream fucking thing coming yeah you know and you know i'll be the star and all you know going across country and writing these stories, you know, what my dreams say, and I, and eventually I'm going to end up cutting <laughs> off my own eyelids because I'm afraid to fall asleep. Yeah, and sh- like it, it was the 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 seed of what New Nightmare would become. All right, like, he pitched that originally all the way back in part three. He, he pitched something similar all the way back in part three, and then they took. He's like, like, yeah, that's too kind of fucking out there, dude. Mm-hmm. Let's just continue with what we're fucking telling. He's like, okay, let's do this. We're all in fucking insane asylum. <laughs> which was good because we got the Patricia Ar- Arquette playing Alice, which was fucking goddamn amazing. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then, but they didn't, they didn't get her back for part four, like, though. The, oh, no. Or five. Yeah, but the, the, uh, the, the black dude I fucking loved. The fucking, I forgot his name. The, oh. Hold on. What is this angry, angry looks between, you, see, you know... Uh, oh, look, everywhere. they recast her, too. No, they didn't. That's the same lady. What? Hold on. You thought you thought it was Patricia Arquette? Patricia, Ar- Patricia Arquette wow. was in 4 and 5? Really? No. I even was like, bro, it's a different nose. No, that's the same one. 
They did not look the same in any way, shape, or form. Patricia Arquette they did not does act not the same in like any way, shape, or form. Else. She was, well, I mean, she was had long hair and like faces. And no, stuff. no, they, no, they no. They look completely different. Titties. Are you it's fucking with us? Blondness. Right. Are you seriously yeah. fucking with Blonde us? Blonde with tits and a pussy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> please do not ever go to Hot Topic and lose me and go home with a girl, please. <laughs> It looks the same. It's fine. <laughs> Fucking Chase is interchangeable drunk. bitches. Wow. Chase is drunk as fuck right now. You, you, you're well, like, you no, seriously didn't catch there were different actors. To give him some slack, it also took him a couple of seconds to realize that the dream child was you were within still here. Atlas and that it was, you know, him talking to her through the dreams. You know, it took him a minute. That's bad because I had to kind of explain that to my 14 year old. And I'm like, hey, you really need to pay attention to what's going on right now. It's going to make more sense later. Oh, okay. What's and then later name? on, once they explain everything, literally fucking handhold you. Like, okay, do you understand what's going on? Um, kind of. Jeez, man, really? Well, <sighs> kids will be kids. But no, no, no. We can't say kids will be kids because Chase didn't pick up on this shit. But Crystal, who is younger than Chase, did. Because Crystal is a Freddy head. Mm-hmm. Crystal, okay, so Chase is 12. How old are we saying Crystal is? Oof. 20? Uh, 22. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, boy. No. Because then I'm going to be looking down on Crystal. <laughs> I'd much rather be looking down on Chase. <laughs> so Crystal is uh, zero. Uh, that's way too weird. <laughs> that's way too weird. She's an embryo and he's fucking her. <laughs> there is no right answer. Exactly. So. You, you, you know, well, the one thing that I loved about Dream Warriors. I'll was, go with, I'll go with nine. All right, nine. If, if Chase. There's still no Chase right is not, Wait, you're saying if Chase, Chase is, is nine? 12, no, if no, Chase I'm is 12, nine, then Crystal apparently. is nine. Got it. <laughs> it's still wrong. It's still weird, but it's not like. Weird, weird. <laughs> one thing I have to say though is the fucking <laughs> the one thing that they did is when they brought into the whole eighties thing because the fucking music was fucking great the whole time. No, but it was eighties. Yeah, but thing. the fucking song Every that they movie. made for Dream Warriors. Yes, yes. Please play Dream Warriors. See, this is pure hair metal band music, and this is fucking great, motherfucking Dakin. They didn't release that many hits, but this no, was a this huge hit. This is it. This is it. This is it. Here it comes. Fucking love it. Where the dream warriors. You got a shitty fucking voice, man. I can't do it right now. They can't even do it now. Oh, I guarantee you. They were in the document. They were in the documentary. Yeah, we're trying to redo it. And I'm like, (laughs) no, I I was watching the documentary. They're actually in the documentary, and the guy's on the mic trying to sing it, and it doesn't sound anything like he used to. He's old. No, he flat out admits, I cannot fucking sing that the way I did. I cannot fucking do it. There is no way in hell that I can fucking hit those fucking notes that I did then. Yeah. But honestly, that that song really, really fit with the film. It really fit with the time. It hit it out of the fucking park. This movie will always, always, always have a soft spot in my heart. And I think this one is the more standout one as being the most popular of the saga next to Wes Craven's New Nightmare and the original. Yeah. Because they actually put this as a trilogy. I mean, they put uh, the original one, Dream Warriors, and Wes Craven's yeah, Nightmare. I remember because when we were originally talking, you kept pushing me to do just do the trilogy, just do the trilogy. But then you just said, "No, the, I want to do all fuck." Oh, like no, no, no. no. Uh, I I I love Freddy so much throughout any incarnation that he does that I want to pay him the honor of you know covering the entire fucking saga. Yeah. Um. All right. So three comes out. Uh, massive fucking hit, and then Chase is falling asleep as we talking about stuff. And I told him like twice now, go lay down. He's- you can, you can if you're if you're a pussy. And I drink you, more you than you. 
Man, you yeah, know, I've hey. taken like ten punishment shots. You got six crystal. or seven. Crystal. Over I've over here for this, my minutes. dude. Yeah, you got fucking nine year old Crystal over here who weighs half your fucking body weight, who oh. has been fucking drinking. All right, and still is contributing <laughs> Am to the I show. Am I half your body weight? We should start calling you half ass Chase. All right, man. <laughs> All right, Chase, go ahead and tap out. Go to bed. Go lay down, or you get a punishment shot. No, no he's my right home. I told you. Are you really tapping out? He's tapping out. It's fine. Respect it. Respect the fact that he's he knows uh, his limits. He's aware enough to tap out. Well, All you right. still have to come back for your ranking. No, I will. <laughs> wow, this is a first for our show. It's fine. It, it's it's a, a first. That's, it's, it's a saga. It's that a fucking goddamn good. fucking. Uh, you know, it's a marathon, not a fucking. You know, sprint. Right? Yeah. I guess. All right. Anybody else have any thoughts on part three? Oh, I will say this about part three. Part three was the most enjoyable. The music, the special effects were really good. The kills were very creative. And also, I thought the acting was a little bit better. Um, but it really showed, like I said, it showed a lot of more character in Freddy Krueger. This is, like you yeah. said, the beginning of Freddy Krueger's more character. You know, yes. Because, like I said, you, he barely said any words in the first and second. But when it came to this one, you, you see his comedic coming in and his, his little you know smart lines that he's saying. Yep. So I, I enjoyed this one, and the it, that's why I rank it Nancy's up. father? Yeah. I will I love always him. love that actor. Yeah. You know, uh, the fact that he went from a, uh, a detective... You know, in the first film and going through and then going, you know, being basically his life fucking ruined and becoming a security guard yep. in part three. I thought it was fucking a great, great fucking move. The actor really fucking showed that. I respect the fuck out of him. Uh, I, I thought on, on his acting in part one and part three were some of the best acting of the entire fucking series. And the part where they actually, because mm-hmm. the, uh, the whole thing about where they buried Freddy in the yeah. uh, fucking junkyard and getting him back and uh, the therapist that was kind of partnering with uh, Nancy yep. and the, trying to the find The therapist him. that felt fucking really creepy trying to date fucking Nancy because he felt like a fucking 40-year-old trying to date a fucking, you know, a, an early 20s. Hey, yeah. yep. Nancy, yep. Nancy, yep. Yep. Nancy, yep. Nancy wasn't a bad looking broad. I mean, seriously, no, no. she, I, I, she no. wasn't bad at all. Heather Langenkamp, I, she, she's she, pretty. She is beautiful in my mind. And the way she played it was, was amazing. And yep. at each film uh, that I saw her in, you see her develop more and more as an actress up until fucking, uh, you know, new nightmare, which I thought you really, really got to see her that shine. The West Craven's new nightmare. I know I'm jumping ahead. Is probably got the best acting of the series, in yeah. my opinion. I thought that was the best acting, but she matured a lot. Yeah, well, she's playing herself. She's yeah. playing herself as the actress, yes. uh, and I thought that was I thought that was creative. I, I, I know I'm jumping ahead. We'll we'll get into that when we get over to that movie. But uh, but go ahead to part four. Hey guys, this is Ron. So I'm just letting y'all know that this is the first part of our two part series of the Nightmare on Elm Street Legacy. We ended up being over five hours long. This was a long episode. I split the episode into two parts. So it is dropping Friday. It is fucking excellent. We go over the pint reviews. We go over number four all the way up to the remake. And we do a ranking of all the films. So stay tuned for Friday. Hey guys, this is Ron. Thank you for listening to our podcast, Barrel Age Flicks. 2022 has been an amazing year with our great shows, including BAF, The Small Batch, Sammy Select, and The Tasting Room. If you like our show, please leave a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Guys, this helps out enormously. Give us a follow on Instagram at Barrel Age Flicks Podcast. If you would like to send us a special film request, please contact us via Instagram, and we will give you a personal shout-out on the show. We are also on Facebook and Twitter. Our podcast is available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Anchor, Audible, Pocket Cast, Spotify, CastBox, iHeartRadio, and Pandora. Special thanks to Carl Casey at White Bat Audio on YouTube for his awesome music. This guy fucking rocks. Check him out. Want to give a shout out to Sammy, one of our guest hosts on the show who does our amazing album artwork. Thank you, Sammy. Our podcast only exists because of listeners like you. To find other great shows, head over to Deluxe Edition Network. Hope you join us for our next episode. Later, guys.